of an outstanding season were awakened abruptly this fall. But after four straight humbling losses, the Cougars' high-powered offense is rewriting the record books once again. At TCU, Kelly Blackwell is also reaching new heights. And he has a chance to become the most prolific pass-catching tight end in NCAA history. where a blue norther blew in last night and very cold, windy Amon Carter Stadium the site today for the Houston Cougars and the TCU Horn Frogs. And we welcome you to Amon Carter Stadium. Dave Barnett along with Dave Rowe. One thing we're fairly certain of today, because of the conditions and some other factors, we are unlikely to see the statistical show we saw between these two last year. Absolutely, Dave. Last year was just, a, it was an unbelievable game. The combined yardage, 1,563 yards between both teams. And look at that, 12 scoring drives, and they took all less than 1 minute and 39 seconds. Houston won at 56 to 35. Another thing that's different today, besides the fact that we're not indoors, is the condition of the quarterbacks. Dave David Klingler for Houston bothered all week with the flu. They're not sure whether he'll start today. Well, I saw David Klingler last night, Dave, in the hotel, and he had a coat on in the hotel, and he did not look like he was feeling very well at all. And then for TCU for the last couple of weeks, Matt Vogler has been bothered by a very painful strained hip muscle. Well, if TCU is going to have a chance, they have got to have Matt Vogler in there throwing. They need that arm. When they don't have him in there, they cannot move the football. He hopes to be able to throw early and often today to Kelly Blackwell, who can set the all-time NCAA career record for catches by a tight end. If he does so, he'll have to fight off some very painful ribs. The first night, I, I was in very bad pain. <laughs> um, couldn't do anything. I uh, had to sleep on my back all night and didn't get much sleep. And since then, it's gotten better. But... Um, you know, it still hurts. It's stick. My ribs are now sticking out, and uh, I look like the Pillsbury Doughboy out on the field. I got so many pads on, but it's something that you have to play with. I mean, uh, the game's more important than you know one little injury stopping you. So you just have to suck it up and go. Well, he's done that all year. Regardless of what happens today, I think in a few years, the seniors on this team, like Blackwell and Vogler, will look back and say, how did we finish with a winning record playing five different quarterbacks? Well, I think that's the most amazing thing about Jim Wacker and his staff is that they have put together this winning season using five different quarterbacks. Houston has really turned their season around. They can finish above 500 if they win today and next week against Texas Tech. What they look back on is early on very inconsistent offensive line play and all season long a bad turnover problem. Well, it has been a shuffle of offensive linemen in and out, different combinations each week, and that fact has been directly responsible for the turnover situation this year. Minus 13 in that category. The wind will very definitely be a factor today in Chile, Fort Worth, and we'll have the kickoff between the Cougars and the Horn Frogs when we return to Eamon Carter Stadium. Uh, who have made their way to Eamon Carter Stadium today have, uh, you get the idea, stayed in their cars as long as they possibly could. Late arriving crowd still coming in. Look at the wind whipping in from the north. Blue norther blew in last night. And uh, despite the sunshine, 44 degrees, 37% humidity, the key number is at the bottom, 29 degree wind chill. And in the last hour, it has actually dropped four degrees. I believe it. I'll tell you, I'm from up north, and I can tell you it is flat out cold. Once you get playing, though, and you get down on that football field, you forget a little bit about the cold, but these fans are going to be chilled. Contingent making it up from Houston, where they are 
hoping to finish above 500 and possibly for the third consecutive year with the second place mark in the Southwest Conference. That's a, a, a contrast. TCU, of course, has already wrapped up a winning record at six and four. No bowl this year. They're disappointed about that, but they would love to finish seven and four. They already have their first winning season since 1984, and this man has already made one All-America team. The Football News All-America team came out last night, and TCU's Blackwell is there. I'm fired up. I mean, it's it's finally showing what I've done in my career here. Um, last year, I set the base for coming into my senior year, and and um, this year I was uh, battling with Derek Brown from Notre Dame for All-American honors, and I I was determined in my mind to do my best to get it. And um, it, when I found out yesterday that I was named the Kodak All-American in football news, it was I was ecstatic. I mean, I, words can't even express how I felt. Well, he should be there, and uh, our congratulations to Kelly Blackwell. Trey Beacon's kick down for a touchback by Keandre Sanders, and the Cougars will start from their 20. They go into the teeth of that bitter north wind, and uh, we wait to see until the last possible instant who will be the quarterback for Houston. It will be Klingler coming in from the bench. They literally were going to decide after the kickoff whether his flu would allow him to go. And, of course, the numbers, not what they were last year, still pretty impressive. He is still fifth in the nation in total offense, averaging 289 yards per game, passing 303 yards per game, 57% with 19 touchdowns. Of course, that's opposed to 54 touchdowns last year. And he goes deep and over the head of the intended receiver, Marcus Grant, on the sideline on first down. Klingler's offensive uh, support today featuring Fred Gilbert, the nation's leading receiver. That's become a tradition for the Cougars. He comes in with 82 catches. It would be the fifth straight year for a Cougar to lead the nation in receiving if he hangs on to that honor. Mike Geisler playing his final game, the senior from Rungi. They hope we'll make some All-America teams this year. They moved him to left tackle from right guard. Some of the shuffling they've had to do on the offensive line this year. A lot of time on second and ten all day, in fact, for Klingler, and he is tripped up. That is 11-yard line. Yeah, he tripped over. He tripped over his left tackle, Geisler's foot, and he was kind of moving around there. Watch the left foot of 67 in the right of your screen. You're going to see him just trip back and step on Klingler's toe right there, and you see Klingler go down. For Houston. Well, somebody will get credit for the tackle without having to work real hard for TCU up front. Today, the final game in just an amazing career for senior Roosevelt Collins. Anthony Hickman in the secondary. Junior, he'll be back next year from Aldine. And Klingler on the scramble on third down, has an alley but has to step out of bounds. Brad Smith chased him out, and it'll be fourth down. Dave, TCU does exactly what they want. They hold Houston deep in their own territory. They should, with this wind that the punter is going to kick into, they should get great field position. Charles Langston is the fifth leading punter in the nation. Second in the conference behind Mark Bounds of Texas Tech and Anthony Hickman, who for the first time ever as the return man for TCU fumbled a punt at Texas last week. Not bad at all into the wind and a fair catch at the 44. 30 yards, really a pretty good effort by Charles Langston. He'll turn around with the win and he'll hit some 60 and 70 yarders today, probably. Well, Matt Vogler, in his final game for TCU, sprained hip and all. You see his numbers for the year, 51%, two touchdowns, and six interceptions for the transfer from Auburn out of Tampa, Florida. Matt Vogler. And the triple shoot for TCU with Michael Jackson in motion and making the catch at the 48-yard line. Jackson, the junior from Corpus Christi Miller. 
Brings in his fourth grab of the year. Offense for TCU with Motkins, the lone setback in most of their sets. And as we said, Blackwell closes out his All-American career today at tight end. Up front, John Marsh. Likewise, his final game, senior from Santa Fe, Texas, their highest-rated offensive lineman all year. Eric Cullors checks in for Motkins as Vogler delivers the screen to Blackwell. There's his first catch. He will need eight more to become college football's all-time tight end pass catcher. Well, let me tell you how tough he was. He just got took a shot right up in the chest and bounced right back up from it. NCNB starting defensive lineup for Houston will look this way. Up front, Sam Faaita from Pacifica, California, former junior college All-American, anchors the front. Ryan McCoy, leading tackler for Houston, 81 tackles on the year. The secondary, John W. Brown, sophomore from Amarillo, probably their best coverage man. On third and nine, Vogler on target. And the first down grab brought in by Shipley. Boy, what a difference Vogler makes in there. He got stuck as he threw the ball. Watch, you're going to see he gets knocked down. Bam, in the back of your picture. Nice concentration by Shipley. Get those hands underneath that ball and bring it in. Here's the stick on Vogler. Watch this, the tail end of it. Bam, he gets knocked down. Alan Aldridge it was delivering that blow. But a hair late in its first down. A hair early movement. By the Houston line, Motkins stopped at the 45 of Houston. Well, and that's the difference between a veteran quarterback and, a, and a, a quarterback that's just getting his first start. Vogler came up there, and he's trying to keep Houston's charge off, just kind of off sync. So he comes up there, changes that snap count, and draws them off sides. Gets a free five yards plus a play that could possibly have broken. We have offside on the defense. We'll replay first down. Rogers Redding from Denton, Texas, our referee today. Physics professor at North Texas University. And it'll be first and five. Toby Morey and Jackson go wide left. Angel Alvarez is wide right. And it's Colors, the freshman from Lake Highlands and Richardson. First down yardage near the Houston 25. Let's check our Southwest Airlines team bus for TC. Well, first of all, start and finish with Vogler. With Matt Vogler, they have a chance to move the ball and score. The way you limit Houston scoring is to keep the football away from their offense. And the last one, that doesn't have any difference with winning and losing. Kelly Blackwell needs nine catches to break the record, and this is just something he deserves. That was coming in. Oh, he's got one catch, of course, so the count is at eight that he needs to pass Gordon Hudson of Brigham Young. On the draw play, Motkins got a good block. And we'll be to the 22. Pick up of about four on first down for the junior from Marlin. Now on the other side, the Houston team must. Well, first and foremost is to continue to pr protect Klingler. We've seen what he can do with protection. That's been the biggest problem they've had all year. See lots of Larson? That's Dennis Larson, the backup quarterback to Vogler. And turn around that turnover situation. Minus 13, you can't expect to win a lot of ball games with that record. Audibleizing is Vogler to get Cedric Dickens, the third different running back, up in the slot. And here comes the blitz, and there goes Vogler down as Glenn Cadrez poured in. And he is the Cougar sack leader for the year. That is number 10 for Cadrez. Well, you can't have pressure up the middle, and that's exactly what happens on this play. They get to him right away. So he has no chance to step up because the pressure's right in front of him. Senior from El Centro, California. And uh, the Dr. Pepper scoreboard today in the second quarter shows number four Michigan leading Ohio State and Tennessee on top of Kentucky. Timeout called by the Horn Frogs. And Vogler will confer with Jim Wacker on the sideline. We are scoreless very early in Fort Worth. Very early in the first quarter and after the timeout, it will be third and 15 
for TCU following Pedreza's sack of Vogler. Only 23% with all the quarterback injuries in the last four games on third down for the Frogs. And again, pressure this time. Colors. And with the cutback and the second effort, he will have the first down. They are just in love with this true freshman, Derek Cullen. Every time they talk about him, they talk in, in the exclamations of, boy, what a career he's going to have. And he just has great ability to cut back. Watch this. It's a blitz, and it's the perfect play for a blitz. Out in the flat of screen, pick up those big linemen. Now watch this little cut right back here to pick up about an extra five to seven yards. Excellent selection. It'll be first and goal after a Houston timeout. And that gives Vogler and company that much more time to get their thoughts together. And Dave, that was a great call by Jim Wacker to call timeout on that third down situation. They were not in the right play. When they came out, they were in a shotgun. They called that timeout, came over the sideline, had their coaches up in the booth, signal down what they should call, and it, and it worked. They converted that third down to first down. Houston burned again on a blitz. They have done less blitzing because of a couple of key injuries. Free safety, Darren Woods with a broken ankle out for the year. Left corner, Jerry Parks, also a leg injury. Last year's nation's interception leader without those two. The uh, defense coordinated by Ben Hurt. Compared to early in the year, a little more conservative in terms of the blitzing. This is the nation's leading passing offense. The Cougars are just under 349 yards per game and the second leading passing offense in the conference for TCU. And that's amazing with all the changes at quarterback. It certainly is. And the loss of receivers. Look how many receivers they've lost during the season. First and goal, Cougars go to the five-man front. Jackson goes in motion. And on the option, Modkins inside the five. Pitch goes to Curtis Modkins. Kevin Batiste came up from free safety, and Modkins made a nice catch of a pitch thrown slightly behind him. You know, last night in my conversations with John Jenkins, coach of Houston, he said, the player I respect most on that team is Curtis Martin. That was really interesting. He said all year long, he's one of the small players out there. He is just tough. He doesn't fumble the football. He does everything that Jim Wacker asked him to do. The impressive first drive of the afternoon for TCU. Just outside the three on second and goal. Over to the end zone behind Stephen Shipley. All alone. And it'll be third down. He had beaten Lorenzo Dixon and Vogler not even close that time. No, and you can see with the reaction that he had when he when he threw that football was, ooh, I let one get away from me. Now he has a, bla a plastic jacket on. That's to keep warmth inside. It's got rubber. It's got rubber around the uh, sleeves, and it'll keep inside. The one problem you have to be careful is that when you sit down on the sideline, it has a big tendency to cool off quickly. Out of the wishbone, they shift both Motkins and Colors wide left. Jackson and Shipley right. And touchdown, TCU. Kelly Blackwell. That's six for TCU. That's two of the nine Kelly Blackwell needed today. Well, it has to be exciting for Jim Wacker to see his offense move, especially after last week. They couldn't even get across midfield. And on for the extra point is Jeff Wilkinson. The junior from near Houston, Katie, makes it seven to nothing. The point is good. The thing that amazes me about Blackwell is the way he gets distance on his coverage. Now, he comes off the football, and he's right away. He's wide open. 
from the end zone here. Look at Blackwell's fifth touchdown catch of his senior year. He's on the right side of your screen. Watch how he pops in. No coverage around him. Someone that has comes into this game with 53 receptions, you certainly would think he'd have coverage. But they just blew it on this play. You can see he just makes that separation. Burned again on the blitz. Eric Blunt, the strong side linebacker, lines up opposite Blackwell, comes in on the blitz. And Vogler knows that was the precise play to call against that defense. They march right down the field the first time they get their hands on the ball this week and TCU up 7 to nothing. I'm on here from Fort Worth, Richland. And those ribs don't feel bad at all. No, right no, no. I can promise you those ribs are feeling a lot better. Beacon with the huge win will again kick the middle man in that the receiving trio is Kenny Perry. And this one should be returned. It'll be Sanders from the goal line. And he will not reach the 17 yard line. A fired up Horn Frog. Andre Sanders will be returned. After a 10 play 56 yard scoring drive. Wow, Michigan jumping out on top. Understand Desmond Howard just returned a punt 95 yards for a touchdown in that game. Keeps that string okay. going. That pretty well uh, solidifies, I think, all the balloting for the Heisman Trophy this year. Coming into the year, odds on favorite, no doubt, David Klingler. And he says no regrets about coming back for his senior year, all in all. Here's the first catch of the day for the nation's leading receiver, Fred Gilbert. 83rd on the year for the junior from Huntsville. We were glad to have a target like Gilbert this year after his first two years were spent very unhappily at UCLA. Job Klingler did last week. Gilbert was certainly part of that, but what a job he did coming off the bench. Five touchdowns, 395 yards against Rice, and they come from behind 41 21 victory. Pressure comes, and Klingler sacked at the nine yard line by Alex Molina. <laughs> The senior defensive tackle from Delray, Florida, his second sack of the year. Well, this is just a moving pocket. What he's going to do is he's going to sprint strong side and set up behind a tackle. He's looking downfield. Molina just keeps on bursting through there and takes him down. Good coverage here from the secondary. This is a view of what, you, what you're looking at in the secondary coverage. Houston gets so many people in the open. You've got to use, usually have to use seven people to cover back there. Three receivers right this time as Klingler rolls and goes deep for Marcus Grant, way out of bounds. <laughs> and a struggling start for David Klingler today. <laughs> it really throws you off, Dave, when you can't practice during the week. And Klingler's had a, at best, a sporadic week of practice with flu, and he had that rib injury earlier. And, uh, so he's got to warm up a little bit. Hickman expecting to receive this punt in Houston territory at the 46. And you would think the Frogs would go all out for the block. Snap is fumbled by Langston and TCU still scrambling for the loose ball. They recover in the end zone. And we wait for the signal. They will say that the ball was originally down at the Houston two. So no touchdown, but first and goal. And the story all year right here. Oh, it certainly is. You could tell right away that TCU was going to come. They've got a great advantage with this win. At worst, they were going to get the punt at midfield. You can see 10 men up, and they just collapse the entire protection. He fumbles the snap. There's the ball going around. Regardless of who covers it, it's going to be TCU's ball. 
Angel Alvarez pulled it out of that pile and then uh, it went away from him. That didn't look like all that bad a snap. Well, the ball, when it's cold like this and Houston is used to being in the dome, the ball gets a lot stiffer on the outside. It just looked like it just kind of slid through his hands. Out of the wishbone, Colors takes the pitch and might have reached the one. But strung out Houston defense pursuing well that time. And let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Angel Alvarez is given credit for the fumble recovery on the previous play. CC has the ball, second and goal from front to two. Frogs already leading 7 nothing, and looking at second and goal still from the two. Under seven and a half minutes in the first quarter. This will be Modkins. And we await the signal. Frogs think he's in. He is. Touchdown. Curtis Modkins, a flag down. There is a flag way over near the near sideline, and it is against Houston. Touchdown, Frogs. They lined up in the neutral zone on that play. But credit Motkins for making a great cut. He started to go outside and then came back inside and said, hey, I'm going to stay behind those big linemen up front. That is touchdown number five this year for Curtis Motkins. We have offside on the defense. The touchdown stands. The penalty being forced on the kickoff. Rogers Redding running down. The offsides cut lead. TCU held to seven points by AM, shut out by Texas, 14 points in less than eight minutes against Houston. Mike Nowak's hold is good, and Wilkinson's kick is good. Well, again, Dave Hopkins makes a nice cut here. He was going to go outside, and all of a sudden, you see those quick feet. Find those big linemen, you just dive in for the score. Well, the early nod goes to the Horn Frogs at TCU with all day still to come back for Houston. Why it's so hard to come dressed properly. <laughs> I'm warm, aren't you? <laughs> I am, actually. I know you are. <laughs> we uh, have been talking all year about the Exxon Supreme team, fans uh, with the uh, opportunity to vote for their all Southwest Conference team this year, and uh, we will be position by position revealing the results of that season-long balloting. As Trey Beacon, who's had a busy first quarter already, will again kick with that big win. I was expecting you to tell me I had a lot more to keep me warm than you did. I think that's uh, more than <laughs> evident. It does not need elaboration. <laughs> this one has disappears up the ramp. And that may go all the way to the locker room. Iowa State, the early lead in 30 below zero wind chill temperatures at Ames, Iowa. In Cincinnati over number 13, East Carolina. Well, if you uh, are Houston, you're not all that worried about a 14-0 deficit because you have 7-17 seven still to go in the first quarter. And you got David Klingler flew it all, and you know that you will eventually get to throw with this win, which has obviously bothered Klingler on the deep patterns he's tried so far. Again, the protection breaking down. He had all day, and uh, finally the sack by Thomas Lewis, the junior defensive tackle from Beaumont. And this is just a, a, a secondary coverage sack. Watch the time he has to come out here. His receivers are downfield, but they're covered. He looks this way, he looks back that way. Now he starts to feel the pressure. He comes here and tries to set back up again, but that's just too long. Incomplete on second down, intended to see for Berlin Brown, inside receiver from Forest City, Arkansas. Klingler, uh, 
really off target here. Well, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Miami game when he struggled so hard during that game, but he has great composure. That's probably his strongest attribute that he has learned this year, his composure when things are not going well. That's what he showed the NFL scouts, where he really didn't have a chance to show that in their success the last couple of years. First down grab here for Tracy Good. And that may get something underway for the Cougs. Good's 23rd grab of the year. As opposed to 67 catches as a sophomore last year. He's had a nagging ankle injury all season. And I can tell you, Dave, after that pass, I saw a little different bounce in David Klingler's walk. Over the middle. Caught again. And at midfield, it'll be another first down. It's Greg Gilbert. You give this quarterback time, and he's going to find those wide receivers. There's Gilbert just does a, a down and back inside. Make him plant. It's not that bad a coverage. It's just a very well-thrown ball. Tony Rand just a half step back. And Roosevelt Collins with about a two-step head start as Teandre Sanders bounces off tacklers and is finally corralled inside the 20 by Greg Evans. Now we'll see whether Collins was drawn off. He was in the backfield as deep as Sanders when that play started. Yeah, it looked to me as if he just guessed the snap count, thinking it was going to come on one, and it did not. That's the call. But hasn't Teandre Sanders really picked up for this Houston team? We have offside on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. You can see now Collins will be way over on the left of your screen. But watch this when he just puts his head down. Sanders just boom right there and just keeps those feet going. 32-yard run. He really is an important part of this run and shoot because you have to have a run threat. That's what Weatherspoon did so well in the past for Houston. Probably their uh, their biggest loss off that team from last year. Chuck Weatherspoon, the super back. On the shovel, Sanders inside the five-yard line. A staple of the Houston run and shoot. Jenkins unveils it for the first time this afternoon. And Reggie Anderson prevented a touchdown. This is an interesting pass because it's an underhand pass. But watch the secondary drop off as Klingler goes back here. You'll see the end is in nowhere. Land. And he just flips it underneath. Now if you're a secondary player, you have to quickly respond back into the ball. You have to close but you don't close before a 10-yard game. First and goal, Houston. Sanders to the three and turn back there by Tony Rand, the strong safety. Boy, this doesn't even look like the same team, their first two possessions. Well, they got a little bit of bounce. They completed a couple passes. Klingler has that confidence. He just keeps on plugging in there until things start going right. And you can see seven plays, 76 yards on this drive. Klingler redirecting Sanders. Probably again Collins offsides and whistles this time before the snap. You got a guess like that, you got to guess right. That's exactly right. You have to, They're trying to get a pass rush, and what you do is you jump, and you try to guess what the snap count is. A lot of quarterbacks get into a rhythm. We saw that with Texas Tech earlier. They come out and go on that first sound. And that's what Collins has done the last couple times is he's guessed when the ball is going to be snapped, and he's guessed wrong. Dead ball foul. Offside on the defense. Penalized half the distance of the goal. Still second down. With a 10-1 record, equaling the best debut ever by a head coach last year. 14-6 overall. Bingler on the roll, over the middle, in traffic and incomplete. A lot of purple bodies over there. Alex Molina, I think, uh, was the man pressuring Klingler into that quick pass attempt. It'll be third and goal. As always, glad to have those of you joining us on the Prime Network today and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. Four and a half minutes in the first. 
Cougars down 14. Molina, early movement that time as Sanders scores. And there are no flags. Molina got back in time. Touchdown, DeAndre Sanders. And you couldn't have called a better play. When you jump off sides and you go forward like that and try to get back and then they run right at you, you have got absolutely no ability to stop a, a touchdown or any kind of run. And that's what they did with Molina. They caught him going backwards and they helped him. The all-time leading scorer in college football history, Roman Anderson, will go for his 409th career point, and he's got it. Well, watch Molina. On the, he's going to be on the left of your screen here, the lower part. Watch him jump off sides. Now, no contact. Now, watch. Get back and watch. They catch him just as he's going back, and we're going to help you go back, and they just blow him right in there. He has no base underneath him to make that stop. Well, as we said, the Exxon Supreme team, Southwest Conference uh, voting by the fans, turned out this way this year. Bucky Richardson is the all-conference quarterback from A&M, Trevor Cobb, who may become uh, the all-time single-season conference rushing leader, is at running back along with Robert Strait of Baylor. Kelly Blackwell is the tight end. Eric Henley of Rice. Rodney Blackshear of Texas Tech are the whiteouts. And up front, Harrison from A&M, Biggers from Tech, Ellisor from A&M, and Turnpaw and Barrett, both from Baylor. Defensively, Matt Sign is the nose guard, Dotson, Dronett, also up front, linebackers Padgett, Buckley, Williams, and Corey. And Gunn, Crooms, Dubisky, and Smith in the secondary. Dave, I understand 81,000 votes were cast in that. Well, he picked a pretty good team. Roman Anderson of Houston is the kicker. Mark Bounds is the punter. The coach of the year is voted by the fans. Fred Goldsmith of Rice and the newcomer of the year. That's a pretty easy uh, decision to go with Greg Hill of A&M. What a freshman year he's had. Well, interesting enough, he was a write-in. A write-in candidate. Short kick. And Hickman tripped up at the 24-yard line. A little more spark from those wearing the red and white. After that scoring drive capped by Sanders, and the TCU lead is cut in half. They are at halftime. And... Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Tennessee up to its lead over Kentucky to nine points. East Carolina back in front now of Cincinnati. Alvarez and Shipley right. David Lewis left. Vogler sees the blitz threatened and audibilizes and gives to Modkins. Cut back, saw some room. He'll go to the 28. You can already see the difference, and not just in the accuracy of the passes by Vogler as opposed to Schultz last week, but the ability to recognize situations. Oh, yeah, that's the experience factor. You know, Eric Blunt has had quite a year, number 42. Watch him read this play. Slide along the line, stay square, fight across, and get in on the tackle. You can't play linebacker any better than that from the weak side. Let him in tackles last year. He's second to Ryan McCoy this year. Colors in motion. Got it off somehow. That's an amazing job by a banged-up quarterback not to submit to the sack by Alan Aldridge. Did you see how quick Aldridge is in there? Someone had to miss the block because there's no way a lineman gets in there that quickly. Poor Vogler even got his three-step drop. Aldridge had him wrapped up. There's another Alan Aldridge not too long ago played for the Oilers and the Browns. That's this Alan's dad. He's a sophomore from Missouri City. Out of the shotgun this time. And much better protection. Vogler now having to scramble. And that'll be way over the head, but we'll get flagged. 
Horn Frog coach is screaming about the hit way out of bounds against Michael Jackson, the intended receiver. And the officials over there assure Jim Wacker they did see it. Well, you know what's interesting about this flag? It, it certainly was a hit out of bounds, but I don't want to, I don't, you don't want to take away enthusiasm. It looked like Ryan McCoy came over there, was trying to make the play, and he didn't have any idea where the side, it wasn't like he hit him cheap and late. It is a hit out of bounds. You can see he's just, he's diving after the play. He does hit him, but that's just aggressive play. Does that mean I'm trying to back up defensive players? <laughs> we have a dead ball, personal foul against the defense, automatic first down. Kevin Batiste also over there. All the body, it's kind of hard to see who made the most of that contact, but really a moot point because it was seen and it is a 15-yard markup. I think I see Vogler limping. If that's the way he walks normally, he's got a little limp in his walk. When he walked back to the huddle there, it looked like he just kind of was just favoring one an ankle or something. The previous play where he was twisted by Aldridge would be a, a real good chance to re-injure that hip if, in fact, that's what happened. Flag down again. Here's Colors to the 43 and slung out of bounds at that point by John Brown, the left corner. And where that flag is thrown, is thrown way on the side, and that's the, the referee's responsibility to look in at the lineup. Someone had to be in the neutral zone or jump off sides. Yep, someone has started off a little bit early. So they gave him 15, they'll take five back. First and 15. The real fans we have an illegal are out today. formation on the offense. We'll replay first down. Now, what a little legal formation is is that they did not have seven men on the line of scrimmage. One of the wideouts or someone might have been in the backfield too far off the line. As always, we announced the Southwest Airlines player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast. Draw play, Modkins didn't fool anybody, especially Bevel and Aldridge, the right side of the defensive line. They combined on the stop. It looked that time like John Marsh, number 62, missed the block, and that's something that's out of the ordinary for him. He's the right guard. Now watch him here. He has to kick out right there. He comes all the way around behind him and makes the tackle. Marsh is probably their top grader week after week. <laughs> They continue to substitute running backs by down, and it's colors this time. They put him in motion, and Vogler will go over the middle. Catch is made at the 47-yard line by David Lewis. Pass is number 18, David Junior Lewis. from Baltimore, mainly a basketball player in high school, with the three state championship teams at legendary Dunbar High School in Baltimore. Nice protection here by this TCU line. Don't allow a lot of penetration. There's the pocket. He's able to stand back there, find his wide out. He throws in a lot of traffic, but he delivers a strike. Cedric Dickens checks in at running back. Three-man rotation now. They get chased. And will head for cover and get knocked out at the 47-yard line. Bevel over there along with him. Well, I was going to say, if I had any idea that he had a, a hurt ankle, he didn't show it on that play. As he scrambled outside of pressure, he has a real neat ability to be able to push off with that, with that free arm. He just kind of, almost like it's a stiff arm, but he avoids a lot of sacks with that. Well, the drive stalls, and Trey Beacon on to kick to Steve Harris. Beacon should go for the lift on this one. Get it up, let that breeze carry it. Harris feels it at the eight. And the return up to the 17-yard line. Kick went 46 yards, and the return went nine. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. 
Well, with that performance off the bench by Cleveland at Rice last week, he now has these Southwest Conference career records. 81 touchdown passes, 8,468 passing yards, 8,410 total yards, 1,129 pass attempts. He surpasses the man who used to back up, Heisman winner Andre Ware. And then talking with John Jenkins, he said that was probably one of the things that really made David Klingler, is that he would sit and watch Andre Ware, and he would chart all the plays and said, Coach, I would do this, I would do this. And John Jenkins says, you're going to get your chance. And boy, has he made the best of that chance. That was almost a lateral that went through Gilbert's hands. And if he was in front of Cleveland, not by much. Jenkins says that he has not had a more well-developed, intelligent quarterback. And he's coached people like Jim Kelly, Doug Flutie, and Ware. And Klingler, he says, tops them all. There's the lateral. You can see right down the line, it just about was a lateral. Shovel oh, pass. Sanders did well. First time they went to it. Even better this time, and he might go. The only man with a chance to prevent six, Tony Rand, finally chases him out. The, the thing that Sanders does so well is not go down by initial contact. Someone hit him in the back and had one of his uh, one of his feet, and he pulled clear of that and sprinted. Looks like maybe Collins had him out here. Watch Collins. See if he doesn't dive on the back of his feet. Yeah, almost trip him up. Now he gets his balance back, and he's off running. They wondered what would happen at this position when the Jenkins dismissed Ostel Miles for academic and disciplinary reasons. Well, it's in good hands. Gilbert out of the tackle and to the 35. Hickman and Rand bring it into the reception by Gilbert there. Clock rolls at a minute 25 in the first quarter. Cougars go for the tying touchdown. Sanders gets a breather. Tommy Guy, his backup, the sophomore from right here in Fort Worth, and Odie Wyatt High School is the setback. And the looping pass caught and dropped by Gilbert. That's a tough adjustment because the wind catches it. And Gilbert has to slow his momentum, look back, and try to bring it in with Rand covering it. And this is just a flag pattern. He's going to go down and then break to the outside here. And he makes good distance here, but the ball is so high. And as you said, the wind holds it up that the defensive back comes back in there. But he just drops. He doesn't look the ball all the way in, doesn't concentrate on that play. Back and forth game in Cincinnati. Third down, they go to Marcus Grant. He cuts inside, has the first down of the 23 where Reggie Anderson makes the ankle tackle. Dave, this is almost like a slip screen. What you do is the receiver takes one step forward, comes back, and catches the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Watch. Now he comes back, catches the ball. Now he's got to pick up those big offensive linemen. And there they are. You see 65 and 70 out there. That's Clapp and Youngblood out there making those blocks and allow him to cut underneath. To the sideline and incomplete. Tracy Good, the intended receiver. And 29 seconds until Houston will get the win behind him. Second and 10. Brown, Good, and Gilbert all left. Grant is to the short side, wide right. And on the draw play, Sanders. Almost got away from the initial hit. Brad Smith finishes him off, and he'll lose yardage on what might be the final play of the first quarter. Loss of one. Boy, he ran into a wall up front. They had that play diagnosed very well, stuffed it in the middle, and he wasn't able to bounce outside. Well, if I'm Houston, I'm in no great hurry to get this off into the wind, and they will allow time to expire, and they'll turn around. 
and go for the tying touchdown as the second quarter will get underway through one in Fort Worth, 14-7 TCU. <laughs> Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe back at Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth where it's 14-7 for now. A very threatening Houston drive will continue as the second quarter opens. Cougars get the 20-25 mile an hour wind at their backs. And look at third down and 11. Frogs threaten the blitz. Klingler play calling accordingly and has time a shot to grant touchdown touchdown houston Never ready. No, i was a little bit surprised that jim wacker didn't call time out on that third down play and utilize that win one more time in a third down and 11 but he he allowed him to run the clock out so now they got the wind at their back and boy you said it you called it right a shot he threw that ball in there just bang right to grant there's the fourth leading receiver in the nation. And Grant with a seventh touchdown catch of the year. Anderson for the extra point is good, and we are tied. Grant, the junior from Dallas Carter, a star on their state championship team. Really catches a dart here from Klingler. Well, this is just, just, just a fly, just go straight out. With that wind at his back, and he just looks it right in. It, it looks like pitch and catch on that play. Again, that little short, strong side roll by Klingler, square up to the line, and boom, throw that ball in there. Perfectly thrown ball. He throws out with as much velocity as any other quarterback would, setting back, and uh, you know, a good seven-step drop off the back foot with classic motion. That time he's off balance, off the wrong foot, and it's like a Nolan Ryan fastball. Well, he snaps his body body when he throws it so he doesn't really need that drive forward with his feet he has such a great abdominals and snaps and throws that ball he just and he gets a lot of chances to practice and you're averaging what 50 60 passes a game check the first quarter statistics one twelve to 15 passing yards 138 65 total yards Houston with uh, the numbers except for on the scoreboard and on the first play of the second quarter they take care of that and Anderson will kick to Mike Houston and Toby Morey well Dave one of the signs of a good football team is when you don't panic and you're down 14 points and there was no panic in Houston's approach low liner Morey wants no part of it and the 14 nothing lead didn't last it at all as long as TCU would have liked. They can't be all that shocked. This is, after all, Houston they're playing. Well, they have to know this scoring machine. Even in that Miami game, I said to John Jenkins, I said, well, what did you say to your team at halftime? He said, I told him this. I said, guys, the way we can score points, we can come back in this football game. And he said, I firmly believe that. So, and we've seen them score at will, so 14 points is not a big lead. Vogler incomplete intended for David Lewis. He's taken a few hits that, uh, that might exacerbate that hip problem that he carried for the last couple of weeks. But whatever he takes, as long as he's standing on two legs, he is going to be out there today. Yeah, he's a lot better than the backup, who has no experience. They lost Aaron Schultz last week to a separation, and uh, we saw their third-team quarterback warm up this week. There are colors to the 25. Yeah, they figured, what are the odds on even Schultz going down? He was the fourth different starter at quarterback. First half of the separated children. That meant Dennis.
Carson today. Baraka Harper, wide receiver. Baraka Harper is the quarterback. He played that position a little bit as a high school junior. That's his qualification if uh, worse comes to worse today. Well, it was really interesting, one of the comments by Jim Wacker. I said, Boy, Coach, you just seem so laid back, and you know he is just a bundle of nerves out there. He said, hey, when you're down to your fifth quarterback, you don't get excited. <laughs> you don't get nervous. You're just happy to be out there. That is Linton Weatherspoon being helped off. Defensive tackle, brother Chuck. Sophomore from La Habra, California. Favoring the right leg. Trey Beacon kicked 44 yards with the win. Steve Harris expects to get this one at his 43. Big rush comes. They pick it up well. And it will go out of bounds, and we'll see where they mark it. Houston's going to get outstanding field position out of this one. At the Frog, 49 is where they'll take over. In a tie game with 13.36 to play in the first half when we return after this from Southwest Airlines. Cougars try to keep their offensive role going. They take over just barely in TCU territory after just a 22-yard kick by Beacon. And Klingler slings it again, complete to the 32-yard line. Daniel Adams, a redshirt freshman from Schulenburg, with his eighth catch of the year, beating Tony Rand. And you said he slings it. He does. He almost throws it sidearm underneath underneath some rush. It looked like he just kind of flipped it. It looked a little like Bernie Kosar there for a second. Sonny Jurgens. <laughs> yeah. Not, not too many sidearmers have done well. And with every completion, he sets a new Southwest Conference career record. He has broken another Andre Ware record. They just keep falling to the sideline and almost a grab for Grant. He had to pay attention to where his feet were going to come down, and that might have distracted him enough. It certainly did, because that ball went right through his hands. You see Klingler said, that's my fault a little bit, but uh, you've got to concentrate on that football. It's a very catchable ball, and he was wide open down the sideline. Listen in along with the Cougars to the play calling of Klingler. This time Grant holds on, and what a shot he took by Edward Gallivy. That's just complete to Marcus Whoa. Grant. This is the way you catch the football. You concentrate on catching the football. He knew he was going to get hit. The ball is just kind of floated out there. It's not delivered with that great velocity. Look at see the trajectory of it. Now look, he knows he's going to get hit. Concentrate, boom, get that shoulder down, take that contact. Boy, he's going to be Another one of those great wide receivers. He's got another year coming back. First and goal at the seven. Cougars have moved Kevin Blyer in at center, and Brad Wigan moves from center to left guard. And Klingler dropped all the way back at the 17. Brad Smith from middle linebacker. When there's nowhere for Klingler to go, this was going to be that little shovel pass underneath. But the man either got caught up in the rush or something. And when Klingler came out with it, watch the, his action. When he starts to come out here, now see he's going to pass underneath. But he can't. Someone's right in his face. So he's got to just take the ball down with him. It's Brad Smith's second sack of the year. And you wonder if that center shuffle made it easier for Smith to pour right up the middle. <laughs> Center, a major injury problem all year for Houston. On the roll, now the scramble. Into the end zone, all alone for the touchdown, Marcus Grant. 
And the Cougars take the lead. Mate, for a defensive lineman, there's nothing that frustrates defensive linemen more than to have a quarterback that's big and strong and able to kind of push you off, move around in the pocket, and just take more and more time. The same thing is true for the secondary. You're staying out there, you're trying to cover them, and this quarterback's running all over the place. And he finally, and of course, with the vision that Klingler has, he finds the wide open man in the end zone. Kenny Perry will hold for another Roman Anderson PAT. 21 14 Houston. They should call this pattern the Maytag repairman pattern. <laughs> you cannot get any lonelier than Marcus Grant at the back of the end zone. Well, watch how he just kind of pushes him off. See, so just push him off. Don't bother me. Now he picks up Grant in the back of the end zone, and you'll watch how wide open Grant is. He's the only one close. Still 11.45 to go as the Cougars run and shoot their way to the lead here in Fort Worth. Well, this thing is really turned around and a Marcus Grant fan awful happy about it. His, his uh, mother has his seen him score the last two Houston touchdowns. We said Marcus from Dallas Carter. Having a huge first half in this 21-point Houston run. Maury may turn this one into big yardage. Got away from Anderson, the kicker, and finally knocked out by Kenny Perry at the 31. Well, I bet he broke six or seven tackles on that run. Maury with the great return. Kenny Perry. He had a 20, uh, 20 yard average kickoff return and he keeps it intact here. Catches the ball very high. Now watch the number of people that he just kind of breaks through. There's one. Comes back out here. He's going to make another move back inside. There's another one. There's another one. Did a good job. So Vogler on first down to give to Modkin. And Weatherspoon is okay. He's back in and combined along with Eric Blunt, the strong side linebacker for the tackle. You know, it was 56-35 Houston last year. We didn't think we'd approach those numbers today. We might at this rate. We're having a we, we thought, well, it's going to be a close game, but you know that's not true when whenever you have a Houston team out there because they score so quickly. Draw play. Nice cutback. Great instincts for this true freshman in the first down. Boy, a lot of stuff feet. you just don't coach in him. Exactly right. Quick feet. That's something that every coach loves. Watch how quickly he makes those cuts. Picks up his lineman nice. Cuts back underneath. There's going to be one cut back inside. Now watch this one right here. Spin. Get right back up. That's the makings of a great back. No wonder they're so excited about his future here. Four two touchdown games in his freshman year. Modkins is back in. He goes off tackle to midfield. Where Tracy Gentry, backup defensive end, makes the initial contact. Well, Dave, one of the things that we felt that they had to do. Well, there's a surprise Iowa State over Colorado. Colorado still with some Orange Bowl hopes. But one of the things I was going to say that TCU had to do in this football game was to control the football, keep it away from that Houston offense, and they're doing it with ground control. That's a little bit surprising. They, that's what they just could not do at Texas last week. Not even a hit of a ground threat. Option pitch to Colors to the 43. And he might be shaken up. He got a late hit he didn't expect. Not late enough to flag by Ryan McCoy. But Colors will limp off. What happened on that play? McCoy was diving for him and dove on the back of his legs after he was down. Perhaps we can see it on the tail end when he goes down. Now watch McCoy come in late. Not intentional, but you see he falls on the back of his legs. Here again is that same play. You'll see McCoy right there trip and go over top of his legs. So back in is Modkins to the 40. Now this is one way you don't let the wind affect your passing game. You run the football. 
Worked pretty well so far on this drive. But that mainly because of uh, colors, and we'll check on his condition. Speaking of the drive, average field position with the win for Houston midfield against their own 18. Houston 45 with the win for the Frogs, their own 26 against the win. Out of the shotgun, it is Vogler scrambling and dropped at the 44-yard line. Len Cadrez, left defensive end, got it. Well, Any time a defensive lineman wears number 40, you know he had to be a linebacker at some time. Cadrez has got that great speed down the line. He didn't let Vogler get outside of him. They were rolling along top three in the nation unbeat last year when he went down with an injury and they were never the same defense after. Only loss at Texas coinciding with that injury to Cadrez and some others. Vogler caught at the 36 Blackwell's third grab of the day but short of the first down. And the Frogs say let's go for it and you would expect them to definitely go for it into the win. On the career catch list, on up the ladder, fourth, passing Emmanuel Tolbert of SMU. And Dave, you can see the harness that Blackwell has on there. That's for the rib protection. He said he felt like the Pillsbury Doughboy when he was playing last week because he had so many rib pads on. On fourth and a short two, Vogler intercepted by James Bevel. <laughs> Boy, Bevel had the play of his day, probably the play of his, his year, right in his hands. Like a good uh, defensive lineman, though, he knocked that ball down. <laughs> now, McCoy blitzes on this play, and that's really, you see him in the middle. Watch, they're going to come right up there, Blunt and McCoy, and they're going to get great pressure on him. Now, it's trying to throw back. Look at Bevel, right in my hands. Oh, coach, I had it. Bad place. <laughs> and on downs, Houston will take over. Still leading. 21-14, halfway mark, quarter number two. You know what the worst thing about that play is for Bevel? When he gets and watches those films, everybody's going to razz him. Great hands. Way to look it in. Throw back to Gilbert out of one tackle, and then look at the pursuit by Roosevelt Collins. <laughs> Collins coming from defensive end. Of stop that he hopes Gilbert might have had, of turning that into a big gainer. Tennessee upping its margin over Kentucky in the third. Grant comes to the bottom of your screen, low and white out right, the other three left. And Rand threatens safety blitz. They send Sanders right up the middle, and a first down at midfield. Houston spreads the defense, and Mike Moulton finally makes the tackle, and that is where the run, part of the run and shoot, is most effective. It certainly is. That, that's what really makes the run and shoot having that, that run threat. Here's the secondary coverage, and you can see how quickly they have to come up. Everybody has to stop, plant, and get back up to the football. And now you start, instead of covering one of those little defensive backs at about 160 pounds, you're trying to tackle somebody at 220 pounds. Deep for Grant, too deep. Uh, he was running free, perfect throw. The nail him at about the 10-yard line. Well, Klingler had an option that time, too. He had Freddie Gilbert right down the middle. Didn't find him. Those are good stats for a full game, not just the first half. For anybody but David Klingler. Absolutely right. Daniel Adams into the game, top of your screen. Klingler goes the other way. Verlin Brown to the 40. He'll be close for another first down. Now he played wishbone running back and quarterback in high school in Forest City, Arkansas. And Jenkins says that makes him a perfect run and shoot wide receiver because he's got all the moves. Well, so many people question Klingler coming back this year. The fact that he had such a fabulous year last year, and this year he struggled, but I'm a great fan of David Klingler. I think he's become a better professional prospect because of this year. 
He's proven that when he's under pressure, he still does not lose his composure. And as they measure, you know, a good comparison as they come up just short. You can look back at Vinny Testaverde, who never had to show what he would do behind a less than stellar offensive line and what he would do with uh, a sack, a possibility on every play. And he comes into a situation in Tampa Bay where that is the case. And look what's happened to his career. Klingler now has an idea of what he can do. And more importantly, the NFL scouts have an idea of what he can do if he does indeed get drafted high enough to go to a team without much blocking. That's a real good possibility. Well, never Troy Aikman, he learned that also the, his first year in. But Klingler never loses composure. What you do is you look at the quarterback's face when things are going bad and you don't see an expression change on him, he just has complete control of his emotions. Fake the inside give, airs it out for Grant, and third touchdown of the half for Marcus Grant. Touchdown, Marcus Grant, end zone. Well, boy, isn't Mrs. Grant glad that uh, he came a long way. She came a long way to watch this. There is a flag down in the end zone. <laughs> that might be an after the touchdown celebration flag. Three today, nine on the year for Marcus. Touchdown, of course, standing. That's what it is. Well, people remember back to the Miami game and the last play of the game where he did a little uh, uncalled for end zone dance. He says his sister especially got on him. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. The touchdown is good. The penalty would be enforced on the kickoff. A lot of people got on him, especially his sister, and he promised her that if he ever did it again, he would pick his spot better. <laughs> well, after you catch a touchdown, I, if, I'm a, if I'm a coach for Houston, I don't mind that a whole lot. I, mean, I don't want to see you taunt somebody and do all that, but when it's 40-3, to 3, I think you mind it. That's, that's true. But here, Anderson makes it 28-14. Klingler dialed his number for the third time for points. Well, again, this is just a fly pattern straight down the field. See the separation now. The safety's supposed to come over and help. Now watch him try to concentrate. He doesn't know where he is. See him trying to keep his feet in bounds, and he was about four yards in bounds, but good concentration. Greg Evans really should have come over and made this play. He's the safety coverage, but he's late getting over there and allows Grant to be wide open in the end zone. 28 unanswered Houston points, and we return after this from Southwest Airlines. That much time still to go in the first half, and Houston and Morey move up to the seven-yard line, and after the markoff of 15 yards, Roman Anderson will have to kick from his own 20. And Howard holds it steady and a great kick returned to the 27 yard line by Mike Houston. I think the wind didn't factor today. Out of the six touchdowns that have been scored, five have been scored with the wind. You saw how quickly TCU took advantage of that wing and the wind in the first quarter, scoring both their touchdowns. The Klingler's come back in the second period and taken advantage of it. The only one scored into the wind was the one-yard run by Sanders. Modkins to the 30. A bit of a personality change as Michigan really running it up on Ohio State now. A little personality change for TCU. They normally would be throwing much more often than running. And today, as you said, in trying to shorten the game and keep the ball away from Klingler, relying much more heavily than we've seen him for a long time on the running game. Trying to keep the running backs fresh, alternating three. On the rush, Bevel might have gotten a hand on that attempted screen by Vogel. Houston's fourth scoring drive of the day.
covered 65 yards in five plays. Didn't take long. Minute and 31 seconds. Drive before that, also less than two minutes. Looking more and more like last year. <laughs> it certainly is. They need seven on third down. Vogler shotgun with time and over the middle. And the nearest man was Kevin Batiste. Shipley, I guess, the intended receiver. He was, he was on the sideline. He was 15 yards away from that one. Well, that ball certainly wasn't thrown with any type of authority. It just kind of floated off his hand. May have slipped out of his hand. Again, it's cold, and the grip on the football is a lot different for the quarterbacks when it's cold. Not the drive TCU needed. Three and out. Blocked. And the beacon kick recovered at the 25-yard line. And Houston threatening to blow this one wide open. That is Carlos Leon, who along with Kenny Perry, poured in on Trey Beacon. Well, the, the snap was high, too, but Beacon just took too much time. You can't allow that many people to get in, in there. The Perry, snap was high. Perry, the man that got it. Leon, the man that recovers it. Kenny from nearby Arlington. So the Cougars will try to drive it 24 to half yards. And Klingler wants it all on this play over the head of Fred Gilbert. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. That's an interesting call. I think that was offsides, but I, I've never seen it with the palms out like that unless you're really cold. <laughs> well, this is why they have a microphone. <laughs> Sometimes they need to explain. Well, we'll wait for it. We have a chop block against the offense. 15-yard penalty. Still first down. Now, I thought the signal for a chop block was down in front of your knees. Now, chop block is you can't cut him down by the ankles, and that's what he did. The offensive lineman drops back and chops down at the legs. Let's watch and see if we see it. See, C31 come into your picture there? That's a chop block right there. Sanders, the running back against Royal West, the defensive tackle. In other words, one person kind of keeps his attention, and then in comes the running back, uh, the running back in to chop him down. 4.55 in the half. First and 27. Major, major mark off. And the two number ones at the 20 vying for that one. Tony Rand almost had an interception. Tracy Good almost had a grab that could have gone all the way. Well, this is a triple wide out on the near side of the field here, down here. And all you do is one drops back, two run out in patterns, and you just try to make the defensive people mess up. Each one has a coverage. Nice recovery there by Rand on the play. He had good all the way. Sophomore from Aldean makes it second and 27. Intended again for Gilbert. He ran a different pattern than the one Klingler called for. And it bounced right in front of Evans. We saw colors a few moments ago limping off, and they have wrapped heavily that right ankle. And 27. And he did have an ankle injury earlier than the year, and that's the type of injury you get when someone falls on the back of your legs. You, you stretch that ankle out. Boy, East Carolina making a comeback. Boy, they've had a Cinderella season this year. West giving chase. And Klingler fumbles as he goes out of bounds. And it is still Houston ball, but Brad Wallace came up from behind David Klingler to cause that fumble. And an injured horn frog down. That would appear to be Royal West. 
He's the man that Klingler probably saw coming out. He probably didn't see Wallace coming up from behind. Well, the most vulnerable place a quarterback can get hit is from the from the back. And there's the fumble. Fortunately for the Cougars, it bounces out of bounds. Here touched and goes out of bounds. That is West. He was being blocked by Mike Geisler. And he'll try to walk it off. One of my name team players, Royal West. Along with his brother, Rock. Let's pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom network. Twenty-eight fourteen, Houston from Eamon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth on the campus of TCU. 4.36 to go in the half. And the long walk continues toward the Frog sideline for Royal West. And when it, you know, when it rains, it pours. That's a cliche, but it's a monsoon of injuries on TCU this year. How about a 61-yard field goal try? Think Anderson's got that kind of leg? Well, he holds the school record of 53-yarder against a and this year. With this wind, we'll see. And that is going to be way off right, but he had that kind of leg. He certainly did. He had the distance. Boy, that was an important series for the Horned Frogs because if they give up a touchdown there, then they're fighting an uphill battle. They came out and gave TC, uh, they gave Houston the ball on about the 23, 24 yard line and were able to hold them. Coming up at halftime, test your knowledge of the Southwest Conference with the Southwest Airlines Trivia Tester. We'll also visit with TCU Athletic Director Frank Windegger and we'll meet this week's classroom champions. All this plus first half highlights at halftime. Modkins for TCU. James Bevel. James Bevel with the tackle at the 46, and the clock rolls at 418. At Arkansas, this is the final game. Southwest Conference for the Razorbacks. Fred Goldsmith would dearly love to send them to the SEC with an L. But a tied right field goal has them on the board. Modkins got three. Dickens replaces him on second and seven. Aldridge gave pressure for Vogler, and it's incomplete intended for Lewis, being covered tightly by Tyrone Davis. Well, Aldridge looked like he's hurt. He's down on the field. It may be his ankle. He got great pressure that time. It's an epidemic of ankle injury. Boy, it is. Well, he's easy outside and here 96 he makes a great move he's got really they missed him and watch his foot when he puts it down right right in there you see how he turns his ankle out then reaches down and grabs that ankle but he's up walking around that's that's the difference between those defensive linemen and those wide outs those receivers they get a little tiny nick they're out of the game defensive linemen you can about break your ankle and you're, you're back up walking Vogler is 7 of 15, but he's hit only two of his last nine. Blitz comes on third down. Catch is made. He'll be close for the first down. It's Angel Alvarez, true freshman from Mission. They may need to measure this one. Alvarez figures to get a lot of activity in the future. 5'8", 162 pounder, all state. 67 catches his senior year in high school. Caught him from Coy Detmer, Ty's brother, for Sonny Detmer, Ty's father, the coach down at Mission. And just enough for the TCU first down. Well, Vogler's making nice play selections, Dave. He's going into that stiff wind. He's using the run a lot. He's using the pass when he when he really needs it. But they are controlling the football. They're keeping the ball away from Houston. But you've got to turn these drives into points. Little swing pass. Blackwell might take this one in. The only Cougar with a chance knocked him out, and it was John W. Brown 
But Blackwell continues a big first half, rib pads and pain and all. Well, people say he's too he's too short. People say that, well, he's got great desire. But let me tell you, he does play hard football. And he turns what is just a little simple pass getting upfield. It's probably made maybe to pick up five, seven yards. Now it's just put it away and run. And he has good speed for a tight end. At 240 pounds, he can go downfield quickly. Five more for the record. Mike, it's big hole. It feels a lot warmer all of a sudden on that side. Modkins has his second touchdown of the day, his sixth of the year, and the Frogs are a Wilkinson extra point away from being back within seven. And what a different Jim Wacker on the sidelines. Last week he stood there with his arms folded all week and suffered along with his team. This week he's back to his old style, jumping around, patting players on the back, grabbing them, encouraging them, shaking them, yelling at them. And he's back. Hopkins is justifying all that praise John Jenkins gave him. Having a big first half. Boy, what a block there by John Marsh, 62. He's just driven his man all the way into the back, all the way into the defensive secondary. Carries 43 yards, two scores for Curtis Modkins. Well, it's not the defensive struggle that we anticipated. <laughs> I don't think anybody anticipated a defensive struggle. A lot of people are paying the price today. You ever tried to play a flute <laughs> when the wind chill is below 30? TCU should have turned a, this, this uh, bench situation around and given themselves the sunlight today. They're over there shivering in the shadows on the near sideline. Comes in with the early lead at South Carolina. Jim Wacker looks up, sees three minutes and 16 seconds still to go in the first half. And he says, boy, if only we could have stretched it out and scored on the last play of the half. That's... An eternity for Klingler as Sanders returns the kick to give the Cougars good field position at their 35. Well, that is an eternity when you stop and look. As you said, their last two drives have been in about the minute and a half range. With this wind at your back and Klingler's arm, the speed he's got going downfield, that is a long time. Well, this one only took a minute 15 for TCU to go five plays and 57 yards. Blackwell with the big play to set him up first and goal. You see the hand warmer that Klingler has around his waist? You just stick your hands in that. Keeps them warm. Keeps those fingers warm so you can feel that football. Inside give. Big yardage to Andre Sanders to the TCU 43. He bites off a 22-yarder before Mike Moulton's tackle. Sanders, six carries, 69 yards. Well, I talked earlier about how important this part of the run and shoot is to keep those linemen honest. And watch when he gets hit here. He just puts that down that shoulder, and very rarely is he pulled down by one person. He just kind of bowls over him in there. Got a good combination of abilities the position he plays in this system. They try him again, right tackle this side, and the Frogs were ready. Brad Smith first of all, and then Rand. But Sanders big enough to withstand some hits up the middle at 215 pounds. Good blocker, north-south type, doesn't juke a whole lot, doesn't mess around, goes right up the middle. And we've seen his speed. They wondered what would happen when Ostel Miles was dismissed from the team. What's happened is Sanders has cleaned this position for his own. He's got two more years. Well, you have to admire a coach that takes their number one running back and dismisses them for a lack of attendance in classes. That's what John Jenkins did. Here's Grant. 
Hickman with a tackle at the 38. And if he doesn't make it, Grant has another touchdown. And David Klingler holding the left wrist. You can see Klingler's in pain. When you're bent over like that and he's holding, let's see if, in fact, he didn't come down on that left wrist when he fell. Oh, he takes a shot in the shoulder and puts his hand down. Smith came on a blitz. I don't know if it was his contact or the way he landed. That's what I thought. Perhaps he put his left hand down to break his fall. And that is a tough competitor right there. Well, timeout with a minute 41 in the first half. And we were talking, I was talking again with John Jenkins about him last week, and he said, he told me, he said, he was standing on the sideline. We're down 14 points. He said, he kind of moseyed up next to me and said, Coach, I'll give it a try if you think you can, if you think I can help. And uh, John Jenkins turned around and said, well, do you think you can play? And he turned around and said, I'll do my best. And boy, his best was quite a day last week. And then you think back a couple of weeks ago to the Texas game, and it seemed like every play they gave him another injury. And whatever he could do, he did in that game and brought the Cougars back to win 23-14. And Jenkins says, with all his other attributes, willingness to study and learn, the intelligence, the arm, which is one of the best I think either one of us has ever seen it. A lot of people who've seen more football than us say the same thing in college football. The toughness is the thing that Jenkins says that he possesses over any quarterback he's ever had. Sanders coughed it up, and it is a TCU recovery. Tony Rand, but a flag is down. And I think I think Roosevelt Collins guessed wrong again. Now, this is three times. As a defensive lineman, you have got to look in at that football. You can guess once or twice, and your coach won't get upset. But what a huge turn this will be because Collins was obviously offsides. If he's not pulled offsides, this is a big turnaround for TCU. Instead of them having the football and stopping the drive, they're going to give it back to Houston. That was Tunji Bolden putting up the big argument, number 91. Well, let's look at the top of your screen here. It's way up at the top, and maybe it is Bolden. You see him start off right there? I thought it was Collins's position. May, in fact, have been Bolden, but it was the outside man. Yeah, it definitely wasn't Bolden. He's the left end. Collins, you saw the right end. Yeah, it was Collins from his spot. Well, and in a seven-point game, with a minute 32 to go, if TCU gets that back, that's time to maybe tie it up at halftime. Certainly is. The way they move the football on the ground, now they're going to give the football back to Houston, give them three more shots, give them five free yards. The big question now is whether it's a first down or not. It was third down and just about five yards. So this could, in fact, give them a first down. On that we have offside side. on the defense. The penalty is enough for a first down. First down. On the far sideline, they uh, measured to determine it is enough for the first down. And the Cougars will go from the Frog 33, and the clock rolls inside 90 seconds. Sanders gets a breather. Tommy Guy is the super back. Come on, Frogs blitz, Klingler hoist one up over Gilbert. Most of his attempts toward Gilbert, the nation's receiving leader, have been overthrown today. Well, one of the things TCU has to realize in this situation, you want to get pressure on Klingler. But if for some chance you get stopped and you don't get pressure, you've got your all your defensive secondary are covering one on one. And you've got some pass receivers that can flat out run some great routes. So if you're going to blitz, you have got to get there. Gilbert out replaced by Sherman Smith, who goes wide left along with Good. On second and ten, inside give to Guy to the 25. It'll be third and a long one as we'll go under one minute in the first half. 
Mike Moulton and Tony Rand on the tackle. And we think Moulton has a great future. Redshirt freshman from Arlington, Sam Houston. Just a ferocious hitter. Pump fake. Deep. Verlin Brown open. Touchdown. Touchdown. His fourth of the year, the pump fake made the play go. Well, if you ever saw coordination between a quarterback and his wide receiver, that's the greatest example of it right there. When he saw Brown was open on the inside, that the coverage was the outside, it almost looked like in his fake pump, he said, hey, turn around and come inside. He did, he threw the ball up to him and Brown comes down with a touchdown. But you see the result of that simple little offsides penalty. It was third down and five. They had recovered the football. They had stopped the drive. They give it back to him, and you see the result, seven points. Well, again, now watch Klingler here. It's almost as if he says, hey, come on back inside. He throws the ball inside where the coverage is not. You see Brown come back inside. Great adjustment there. Again, here's the pattern. Go downfield. Now, they're trying to do a lot of single coverage here give off and try to recover back with a corner that's Hickman trying to come from a corner spot back over to pick up for the safety that's awfully hard to do that might have just been a 14 point swing assuming that TCU could have driven down and tied the score and instead Wacker right back down by 14 after leading by 14. Well a great coach I had a fellow named John Madden used to always say that every football game is decided by five or six plays. That is one of them right there. That little simple offside seems like a simple enough five yard penalty and it turns into a as you say a possibly a 14 point swing. Still 39 seconds. Roman Anderson adding to his NCAA scoring record. Up to 413 points with his five PATs this half. Houston and Morey deep. This will be Morey at the goal line. Does not get far. The 14 with a flag down from way over. On the near sideline, the side judge spotting an infraction. I thought that was a face mask. That's what it looked like to me. It looked like the hand went up into the face mask. That's As usual, <laughs> your radar is on target. Oh, that's the big one. 15 yards. We have a personal foul grasping the face mask on the kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down. It's Thomas Lewis grasping being helped off. On the kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down. And the latest Houston scoring drive covered uh, a relatively long two minutes, 37 seconds, six plays, 65 yards. Modkin. Little opening right side near the 35. And unless TCU wants to try to go without a huddle, that should be the last play of the first half. Momentum swings the story of this first half. TCU off to the quick 14 to nothing lead. 28 unanswered Houston points. TCU back to within seven. And then the Brown touchdown. They get this one off with two seconds. It's Cedric Dickens. Cedric and Dickens that will do it for the first the half at Avon Carter Stadium. It has been the David Klingler and Marcus Grant show for the most part in Houston will take a 14 point lead into their halftime locker room. David Klingler with 281 passing yards, 326 total yards. And the majority of that course in that second period when he had the wind at his back. TCU with a three minutes plus edge in time of possession. Very misleading because they trail by 14. Paired 
Stewart if you wanted to watch Houston and TCU today. And after enjoying a 14 to nothing lead early on, the Frog fans a little quiet with this 35 to 7 Houston run leading to the third quarter. Beacon with a good high deep kick. Perry will think about running it out. <laughs> better. Luckily, he did. Take the touchback. Cougars go from their 20. First half drive track looks this way for the Cougars. Took them a while to get on track, and boy, when they did, look what happened. You can see the difference. The first two or three drives were into that wind. The last were with that wind at their back. Into it here in the third, and Klingler who took a blow to the left wrist, apparently shaking it off and okay to start the third quarter. Fred Gilbert takes the pass right up the left side, and it will be first down to the 35. Collins, again, great pursuit from defensive end to chase down Fred Gilbert. And the musts in the first half, C, incomplete, and B. Well, Klingler has been sacked five times. We haven't seen Larson, so that's an incomplete. But they have turned around the turnovers. They've only given up the ball one time, so they're doing they're doing fairly well in this first half. Rush collapses around Klingler, got it off, and a, about an eight-yard pickup. Gilbert again on the pattern. Calvin Jones, the backup left corner, made the tackle. Boy, they you know with this little sprint pocket that Klingler does so well, he just gets great protection. He picks up that line, it gives him a little bit more time. When he has that time, he is as accurate as any quarterback you'll see. That's 88 catches now for the year for Gilbert. Should maintain the nation's leadership in that department. And that should be a first down for Marcus Grant. First half, he was the deep threat. Had 125 yards on six first half catches. Now seven for 129 for the day. You know, Dave, if you're watching that play, you think, well, that's so easy to defend. But with the speed that Houston has at their wideouts, you've got to play seven to nine yards off. So when he doesn't do that pattern, you've got to close quickly. And you've got those big linemen running out there. Pressure came and Klingler just to get away from the sack and again he's holding the left hand well he was so you see again he holds that hand he's had a he's had a hard time with that left looks as if it's his left wrist what's the pressure here that's brad smith 51 they come right up the middle on him there's 44 that's reggie anderson they get excellent pressure Second and ten flag is down. Catch is made. Grant knocked out of bounds by Hickman. A yard shy of the first down. We'll check the flag. Oh, I don't even have to check it. I'll bet you it's Roosevelt Collins again off sides. I cannot believe that. Now, I know how great a football player he is, but you have got to look at the football. You just cannot guess because he's cost his team at least twice in this game. First down yardage and that one touchdown drive. You've got to look at that football. And he jumps off sides from his end spot again. He projects as an NFL. We have offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Projects as an NFL outside linebacker. And you think back, most of the linebackers who are in the pros from TCU also played the stand-up defensive end in college. And good look at the incorrect guess by Collins. He figures to go uh, by most indications top two rounds <laughs> again short behind grant this time bring up third and five well what's really amazing to me about collins dave is that he covers people out of the backfield he's a, as you said a stand-up defensive end he's six foot five 250 pounds and he's able to run with a back out of the backfield and it's evidenced by the fact he's got two interceptions, so he's got to be a pretty good coverage man. Sanders up in the slot on third down. Kingler can run for it and will, and he'll get the first down yardage to the 43. And the Cougar drive alive. 
all over at Ann Arbor, Michigan, headed for the Rose Bowl with a big win over Ohio State. Desmond Howard may be solidifying the Heisman Trophy with his performance today. All the short passes not tempting the TCU defensive backs to come up any tighter in their coverage. They're still given a seven or eight yard pass. Too tall for Grant. Houston fans and players and coaches on that side wanted Hickman to be called for a late hit, but not nearly seriously enough to draw the flag. It was close, though. I thought it was close. When the ball is clearly overthrown, you've got to let up as a defensive corner. Now watch. See, he's coming down. He still gets a hit. I think what mm. the reason that the, the flag was not thrown is that he didn't follow through with the hit. And Grant didn't fall down. It looked a lot more severe had he. Second and ten. Just got it off. Incomplete for Gilbert. Good thing the pressure came down on Klingler because Gilbert running free ahead of Greg Evans. Boy, and on that play, Klingler needed about another, as you say, about another tenth of a second, and he would have found Gilbert across the middle, but a, a good outside blitz to get pressure, pressure on David Klingler. That ain't bad. 70% on third down completions. Conversions, I should say. This is Grant, and again, should have the first down. They'll mark him at the 32. Steve Reed chasing him out of bounds. Well, you know, Dave, when you think of Roosevelt Collins, you think 73 tackles, but he's not really been a real factor today. They've covered him with a deep a back trying to keep him out. They've got a lot of respect for him. But he really has not been a real factor. You see two men occupying him. That's the respect they have for him. Reed just a little late to push Grant out before the first down marker. He got there. And with 13-11, third quarter, Cougars continue to march. Looking to go up by 21. Might not happen. Fumble. At the 37-yard line, Roosevelt Collins on the bottom of the pile for the TCU recovery. Just as we weren't calling his name, he comes up with a big play. He's that quick down-the-line pursuit, and that's his play on this. He just dives in. It really looked like a tie was going to go to Klingler, but Collins able just to wrestle that ball away. Now, he's going to be on the left of your screen. See, he's going to come down the line. Now, there's the fumble. Now, watch how Collins quickly reacts. Klingler comes back for it. Looks like a tie, but Collins comes up with it. And it looked like Sanders didn't expect to get a handoff. He ran right through that give from Klingler. Big break for the Frogs, trying to come back from 14 down. Vogler delivers, complete to Blackwell. First down, near midfield. As we check the TCU first half possession chart. What a difference the win makes. Look at where they started off. The first, those first two touchdowns, great field position. Blackwell's fifth catch. So he's got almost all the second half to get four more for the tight end record. Cedric Dickens. Ridden to the turf by Ryan McCoy. Defensive newcomer of the year last year out of Beaumont Central and the Cougar tackling leader this year, middle linebacker. And time to grade the TCU must. Well, first of all, start and finish with Vogler. What a difference the quarterback makes over last week. Keep the ball away from Houston. They have an advantage in time of possession. And get Blackwell nine catches. He's got five. And I can promise you there's no one more aware of that than Jim Wacker. Eight, nine. And that one picked off. It was intended for Shipley, and Lorenzo Dixon comes up with his second interception. 
But if Vogler could have this pass back, he'd love to have it. You see the way his hand went? What he was saying there was, I floated the ball out, and I should have delivered the ball. And Linton Weatherspoon is the reason he had to float it. He rose up and got in Vogler's face. So Lorenzo Dixon, junior college All-American from Los Angeles, gives it back to the Cougars. Still early third quarter, but the Dixon interception makes up for the Teandre Sanders fumble, and the Cougars go from their 34-yard line. Good Gilbert and Grant, the G-man, all wide right. Brown left. Sanders is the superback. He had a nice first down. He's ankle tackled here by Molina. Nice first half, I should say. Sanders now with his ninth carry, 67 yards. Klingler got away from Smith on the blitz, but the sack recorded at the 32. And TCU has had good penetration all day on this beleaguered Houston offensive line. So what Houston tried to do that time was go hurry up offense and go on a quick count, and it backfired on them because their offensive linemen weren't able to, to pick, uh, pick up the blocking assignments. That's a season for a lot of people. That is just in the last two games against TCU. With this one... Just early third quarter, that sack recorded by Vincent Pryor, true freshman from San Antonio Churchill. In there, golden spot at left end, and it's third and 11. Pryor again chasing Klingler, and he got him short of the first down at the 40. They move Bolden to tackle, and they give Pryor some snaps at left end. Of course, he's the man of the future. Bolden with one more year, and you figure they'll find a spot for Pryor next year. Boy, that showed good speed down the line by Pryor. It's not often that you think of a defensive end in the 220 range running down a quarterback. Langston had his difficulties, fumbling a snap, leading to a TCU score in the first half to a kick to Mike Houston. Big rush again. And that'll draw a flag. They didn't get ball. They got a lot of Langston, though. They let it roll to the 17, but this will be a frog penalty for Ruffin. Boy, whoever hit Langston, he never went for the ball. He went. He looked as if he was going to try to tackle Langston because he hit him right in the side. You think of blocking punch, you think of out in front, two yards in front of the kicker, getting your hands up. But this guy, whoever it was, ran right down his throat. Angel Alvarez. Is that Alvarez come and hit him from the side? We have running into the kicker on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Now watch Alvarez from the left of your screen. He's not even going to try to block the punt. He's coming right at the kicker. Look at this. Boom. Now that's, that's kind of running into the kicker, wouldn't you say? This is the seventh TCU penalty. They, they have been particularly untimely. Well, you give an offense like this. If you want to keep the ball away from them, you don't give them other new opportunities. It's the first down, another set of downs. You just don't give Houston that much time. Good fake to Sanders, and Klingler wishes he had given the ball off because he is again sacked by Collins at the 38. Seven sacks of Klingler today. Well, Roosevelt Collins might have woken up when he heard this, when he heard us say that we haven't mentioned his name because the last series he's been in there. This is Collins' sack. He's 48. He comes from the left of your screen. Watch this protection break down. You just keep on working as a defensive line. Just keep on pushing your way through. Klingler's lucky right here. He flipped back over backwards and almost hurt it. See how his foot came out? Well, he could have sprained an ankle easily on that play. Marcus Grant to the 42. Well, Klingler just completely refusing to go deep into this win. Cheeking away. He's got 8.53 still to go in the third quarter. 
And he's got 13 yards to go on this third down. Well, when you've been sacked seven times and you're under a lot of pressure, you don't have the time to go deep also. Chased again. Got it off, intended for Verlin Brown, and over the wrong shoulder. He'd beaten Calvin Jones, and he Just looked over the outside shoulder. But I think even if he brings it in, he's probably out of bounds. He wanted it over the right shoulder. Well, you have to credit TCU's defense. They've given the ball back twice. They got that fumble, and now they've held him on a good series here. So TCU is still in this football game. I know they've got to score points, but their defense is really the thing that's kept them in this football game. Well, let's see if they play return this time. Nope, heavy rush again. They've got Langston at the 27. And Alvarez, a big part of it after his mistake on the previous punt. Well, when you look up and you're a punter and you look up and you see 10 men on the line of scrimmage and they've just come down your throat three times, you have got to realize you've got to get the ball off. That, I mean, he just dropped it the exact same way. There's no way he's going to get that punt off. If I'm over on the sidelines, I'm going to tell him, put some stick them on your hands, do something to, to get a softer touch, but the ball's just banging off his hands. Frogs with a great opportunity. Swing it to Blackwell to the 27. You know, I got to wonder, he's over there on the sideline and has all day to keep his hands warm. If, if they're cold, they shouldn't be. Well, that's the problem. Be. No, you wear gloves on the side. You saw the hand warmer that David Klingler has. A punter only gets in there five or six plays, and this is one of the best punters in the country. We're talking about an athlete with a 43 and a half yard average coming into this football game, so his hands should be warm. <laughs> Curtis Mopkins inside the 25. That'll bring up third at about two or three. Let's pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom network. At Damon Carter Stadium on the TCU campus in Fort Worth. Interesting game. Houston with a 35 to 7 run after they trailed 14 to nothing. 7 11 to go in the third, and TCU threatening after the fumble punch snap. Blackwell, another grab. First down at the 16. That's seven catches. He needs one to tie Gordon Hudson and two to set the tight end of career NCAA record. Well, you want to make a short bet? You bet that Blackwell at least gets two more throws in his direction. <laughs> But it couldn't happen to a better football player. I bet it happens on this series. <laughs> well, it couldn't happen to a better football player. Dedicated weight man in the weight room all the time. He's filled his body up. A lot of people said he's too short. But I can promise you one thing. Whatever team gets a shot at him, he's going to heal. He'll play his heart out for him. TCU will call time with 541 in the third quarter. <laughs> 35 to 21 Cougars as we return after this from Southwest Airlines. <laughs> One to go, third quarter. TCU will go first and 10 from the Cougars 16. And they will line up Blackwell, strong side left. Three white outs right on first down. Motkins up slot right. Cougars want the max blitz. Frogs pick it up. Catch. Shipley. Touchdown. Believe it or not, that is Stephen Shipley's first touchdown pass this year. There was no denying to him on that play. But Shipley got within about two yards of the end zone. He just dove up in the air and over. He was not going to be denied that touchdown catch. Wilkinson 
to make it 35-28 out of Mike Nowak's hold. Dave, what a difference a week makes. Last week, we sat there and watched a quarterback that couldn't make the adjustments. This week, Bochler picks up the blitz. He sees it. He sends people out in the flat. Now, watch Shipley at the tail end of this. Up and over. He's got great leaping ability. They said he has a 32-inch vertical jump. He used it on that play. On the team. 35-28 here for Houston. The other Houston school is the good or conference updates with Rice hoping Trevor Cobb gets at least 152 yards today to break Earl Campbell's single season Southwest Conference record of 1,744 yards. At halftime, the Owls trail at Arkansas six to nothing. In Arkansas's SWC finale. And Dave, we understand Trevor Cobb has 12 carries for only 39 yards at halftime. Well, as you pointed out so often, he can have a half like that, and they'll give it to him 30, 35, 40 times on the 38th to 39th carry. He can break one 40, 50, 60 yards. That is a real struggle all day for the Buffaloes, and the Aggies have the early lead as they try to clinch the Cotton Bowl berth. Grand holding, beacon kicking. That's a smile. Perry from the three. Danny Perry with the flag down to the 45-yard line if it stands. Well, that flag is thrown all the way back at about the 20-21 yard line. It's coming back on a Houston flip. Clipping the indication against Houston. And we're glad to have those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. See if we can pick up the clip. Well, you may see it. It's number 40. Got blocked we have right Clifton in the back there. On the receiving Both team on the 40. return, penalized half the distance of the goal. First down. Kevin LeBay, 99, delivering the clip. Lincoln's resorting to the ball. <laughs> and make himself hurt. He's right in front of the TCU band. And if Klingler can get him up the field, he can move away from that band and be heard better. That one intended on the sideline for Marcus Grant. And Brad Wallace came in for the pressure. Biggins is an innovator in a lot of ways as a football coach. I've never <laughs> seen a guy use this from the sideline. <laughs> Tom Landry used to at the Thousand Oaks training camp. Never in a game. Well, I think what he's yelling out is the defensive coverage, because I just heard him yell out 3-3-3, three, 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 and he may be calling the type of coverage in the secondary. Oh, the, the Molina wipe out Sanders, and somehow he got away. But he didn't get any extra yardage. And a frog is down, and it is Molina who made that initial hit. Well, Molina's played hurt for a lot of this year. I mean to tell you, he stuck Sanders in the backfield. It looked as if he just came through just clean on the play. Maybe he had a, a slant to the inside, and, this, and the guard just missed him. Now, there he is right there. See, the guard is pulling. He's right behind the guard. Wow, that's a contact. Now watch Sanders. Don't lose those feet. And he picks up yardage. Well, he gets back almost to the line of scrimmage. Molina holding the right elbow or shoulder. As he jogs off, it's third and 11. Finally, some time. And the catch made for the first down. That is a big grab for Verlin Brown. Boy, the time in that Klingler had back there, he could have eaten a sandwich and still thrown that football. He started, he wanted to look like he wanted to get out of the pocket, but then he just, watch his feet. All of a sudden now, I got to get out. Nope, I'm going to square back up. I've got all the time. Look at the time my line's giving me. 
Boy, that's great concentration. That's one thing these Houston receivers do so well is they, they don't take their concentration, their eye off that football. Quick toss, Marcus Grant. And he'll be close for a first down. Didn't get out of bounds. 5.37 in the quarter. No measurement needed. First down. Three first half touchdown catches by Grant. Half as many as he had in the entire first nine games. This time they take short on the blitz. Anderson might have grabbed the face mask. There is no flag, but he really grabbed Klingler high along with more pressure from Wallace. Anderson with his fourth sack. Boy, Brad Wallace, 94, was in there so quickly. Watch how quickly the pressure is. Right up in front of him. There's Anderson. As he turns around, there's Wallace. I mean, they had a crew of people in there. I think his hand grazed the face mask, but yeah. properly, that was not called. Loss of 10 yards on the eighth sack of the day by this fired up frog defense. And the safety blitz came that time. Intended for Sanders, he barely got it off. Smith got a hand on the ball, Rand had a hand and more on Klingler. Boy, Brad Smith came within an inch of catching this football. He was on a blitz and they were going to do that little underneath shuffle pass again. And Smith was right there. I mean, he almost caught this thing in stride. Anderson inciting the crowd on third and 20. And again, hurried it again, incomplete for Grant. Boy, TCU gambled that time. They sent eight men on that blitz. Eight people. That means they left three one-on-one -on -one coverage, and they were able to get to them. Watch the number of purple shirts coming into your picture. You'll see them all over the place. They just took a chance. There's Collins in his face. They took a chance that they could get to him. Now, if I'm a punter on Houston, I want to get this one all. High uh -oh. snap, Langston running for his life. At the 17, they get him again. I can't believe it. Well, at least he caught this one. What a day Langston's had. He's a decathlete. He was third in the conference in the decathlon. He is a good athlete, but look what he has had happen today. First kick goes 32, fumbles a snap, runs into uh, uh, the punter, tackle before the punt, tackle before the punt. John Jenkins sees this uh, seven-point lead in real jeopardy now. Well, in fairness to him, that was a very high snap. And when he brought it back, down the pressure was right in front of him he really didn't have much to do on that play there's there wasn't much one much of a way he could bail himself out of that troubled spot give us to modkins got outside inside the 10. there's some quick feet eric blunt chased him out well, they will say speed kills, and that's the difference right there. Motkins was, when he was going inside, he was going to get no yardage. He kicked on those little afterburners and got outside and picked up about eight, almost nine yards, about eight yards on that play. Dogs had the win for the final 421 of this third quarter. Trying to make the most of it. Mike Nowak giving himself a hard time. Boy, and there's no, see, look at Jim oh, Wacker's response. Oh, man. There is no penalty that kills an offense more than a five-yard penalty when you're, in, on the you're offense, inside the ten-yard line. Penalty, still second down. And you take a five-yard jaunt backwards, and it's just a mental mistake. TCU not burned all that badly by penalties, yardage-wise, but their timing has been particularly poor. A&M adding a score. Dickens in motion. 
Vogler overthrows Shipley. It'll be third and seven. Boy, and if Vogler could have waited just another second, Shipley was going to break over the middle, and they had no, no one in the center of that zone. He would have been wide open, but again, you know, it's, it's real easy to sit back and say if he could wait another second. Might keep an eye on Shipley, the best target at 6'5". They send him short side, top of your screen. Alvarez right. Play action for Vogler. Throws right, caught at the eight-yard line, Blackwell. And that ties the NCAA career record. Well, I was just going to say, you said you'd go to Shipley. I thought to myself, I think I might keep Blackwell in mind also. He did not get the first down, but he did get his eighth catch. Yeah, now watch, see his drive off, he just runs through. But what great concentration to bring that football in. One of the problems they have, though, they're on the right hash mark for a field goal try. And most field goal kickers in this situation have a tendency to hook the football. 25-yarder Wilkinson, just 7 of 18. And it's a fake. Blackwell inside the 5. Touchdown. Kelly Blackwell. And Dave, that's a reception, too. Even though it's behind the line, it's a pass. That's it. That's the record. And what a what a way to set that record on a fake field goal to, to do your tight end that's had such a marvelous career. And they throw it on. It's a little, it's almost like a shuffle pass in there underneath to the wing. And that's the position that Blackwell plays on that play. He's the wing, the up wing. So when the ball is snapped, he just comes in motion. He gave that ball to his quarterback, and Matt Vogler takes it to the sideline, and he'll put it in a safe place before it goes into the trophy mantle. Now Wilkinson will kick, and it's tied at 35. Well, two weeks ago, you wouldn't have given Blackwell a chance to get this record. See him on the wing right there? They're right behind him, but he just has that speed, puts that head down, shakes off a couple people, dives into the end zone. Again, he's the wing back, the up man on the outside, the right of your screen. Watch him go in motion. There he's in motion. There's the shuffle pass to him. And around he comes and into the end zone. They are uh, greeting Kelly Blackwell like the hero he has just become. Boy, what an emotional moment for the NCAA's all-time pass-catching tight end. Well, Kelly Blackwell will continue to get well-deserved congratulations for setting the NCAA record. He has done it despite badly injured ribs these last couple of weeks. And how appropriate that it comes in a game-tying touchdown of a fake field goal. He can kick returned by Perry to the 25-yard line. What a career for Kelly Blackwell. And we asked him to reflect back on what he considers to be his highlights. Every year we have key people go down, and it, you know, this year we we're on a roll. Um, if we had Leon Clay back there and a few other, Richard Woodley and Shipley was out the first couple games and, and our defensive line also, I mean, it, it could be a totally different season and this wouldn't necessarily be our last game, and which it is, but um, it's, it's it's been disappointing in that respect, but otherwise it's been a great career. I mean, I, I love it. I love every minute of it and, and uh, you know, I, I will have no regrets whatsoever. All over the... Super back Sanders and the TCU defense feeding off the energy that surrounded that uh, record catch for Blackwell. We've got 10 touchdowns on the board already. Eight have come with the win. And he may very well be our Southwest Airlines player of the game. When we announce that at the end of the game. Too tall for Daniel Adams. And almost intercepted by Reed. It will be third down and 11. Two forty-five in the third quarter. 
Boy, this was really an important series for Houston. They need to get something going to take the momentum away from TCU. If they don't make this first down, they're going to have to punt again into that win. Swift giving chase. And Collins. And it'll be fourth down. What I can tell you right now is the punter jogs out here. Boy, is he concentrating on the fundamentals. Catch the football. Get it off quick. I can promise you one thing there. If there's another block punt for John Jenkins, he's going to have a heart attack over there. He's got 10 men up again, Dave. Good snap. Got it off. Anthony Hickman, fair catch at the 46. Well, we're joined by a guy who's got to be a little nervous about things. Long about now, the University of Houston Athletic Director, Rudy Davalos, joins us in the booth. And uh, what a game of momentum swings this has turned into. Well, whoever has that win scores points. I think you mentioned eight out of the ten touchdowns uh, have been scored uh, with the win. I'm not, you know, I'm not too excited about <laughs> about this. You know, when you're when you're five and five and uh, you're hoping for a lot better things. I, you know, we've played very erratic today. Uh, uh, have looked very good at times and have looked poorly. I was very proud of Kelly Blackwell uh, on his career catch. Got a little penalty out there, Dave. This uh, this may be offsetting. Flag at the 45-yard line. Well, they sort it out. You you have turned what could have been just a really disastrous football season into a respectable one, and it may be a plus 500. One. How, what does that do for your overall program? Well, we're you know we've gotten to the point we've had nine and three, nine and two, and ten and one, and uh, we're not real happy you know with this season. But uh, our, our guys have played hard. We played a heck of a schedule, too. We played, uh, of course, Miami beat us, national, probably be the national champion in Illinois, and played A&M a heck of a game. Really uh, the only one in the league so far. We played them real, real good. And uh, so we're, you know, we're not happy about the season, but, uh, you know, we're not crying about it either. Rudy, you've got to be pleased about David Klingler's uh, selection to stay in college football. We have get his degree. Foul. Personal foul. He will graduate in, I believe, three weeks, and uh, a lot of a lot of controversy over that. A lot of people thought he should go pro. I thought it quite interesting that he felt that strongly about your program. David David is his own man. He's a great, uh, I, I think, a great inspiration to a lot of young kids. Uh, he's uh, he's a he's a class act. He's uh, been a, a, a tremendous asset to the University of Houston, and uh, you know you would have liked for him to have a you know a better season of, uh, as far as more more wins, but uh, you know he's done he's done the right thing in his mind he's going to be a wealthy young man here soon and uh, <laughs> you know he'll probably do some color down the road uh oh well, wait a minute now <laughs> let him let's let him have a career first and let me get a few more years <laughs> ran out of the hands of david lewis and it'll be third and eight well i thought it quite interesting i heard a story that he wrote down the reasons he should go pro last year and the reasons he should stay in school and turned around and said all the reasons that he should go pro involved money and all the reasons he should stay in school were education and future and those type of things. Well, Dave, he loves to play. He, you know, he loves college. He's uh, He's got a girlfriend there. He, he, he has a lot of friends. He's from the Houston area. He's in, He just enjoys himself. Frogs on third and eight. Under two minutes in the third. And Vogler steps up and delivers complete to Shipley for the first down. <laughs> this is old style Southwest Conference aerial circus football today. Well, you know, you get two teams like Houston and TCU who, who have basically committed to throwing the football, and uh, it's appropriate that Blackwell gets his record, you know, against us, or we're going to get records when we play people. And, uh, you know, when you throw the ball like both, both these teams do, you're going to have a lot of records. Harper, wide left. Lewis and Shipley right. As Modkins, met immediately by Glenn Kendrick. 
one of the greatest things could happen to any athletic program. You had a, a donation that I don't know if you expected it or not, but it, it really turned your financial picture around. Yet, uh, Dave, we had uh, John and Becky Moores uh, from Sugarland uh, uh, donated $25 million for our athletic facilities. We're going to be building a, probably an $18, $19 million facility, indoor field. Uh, uh, all offices, training rooms, weight rooms. It's going to be a great, uh, great thing for the for us, not only us, but the conference. Ziegler play action. Ball deflected by Cadrez. And uh, bring up third down and eight. We appreciate you coming up here and weathering the wind with us. Well, you know, my old, my old days with you as a color analyst for the Mavericks, so we used to be indoors. <laughs> you know, I think when it gets this cold, uh, you know, I'm ready to go to basketball. Would you push through that NCAA rule uh, that everybody has to have a dome stadium by, by the turn of the century? Yes, we'll see what we can Get do. Get working on that. On that. Thanks right. for coming up. Yeah, you bet. Good to be with both y'all. Rudy Davalos, U of H Athletic Director. <laughs> Over again for the first down to Shipley. That's Butler. His third quarter showing the best of both Blackwell and Shipley. Boy, showing the best of that wind. Rudy talked about that wind being a big factor. It has been a huge factor. You just, when you stop and look at eight of the ten touchdowns have been scored with the wind, gosh, boy, I'll tell you one thing, it's almost where you want to miss, uh, you want to win the toss and just all of a sudden give the other team the ball. Just let me have the win. Dickens gives Modkins a breather, takes it on the draw play, off the right, to the 15. Should be another first down. Boy, what a block by Blackwell that time. You know, we talk about him as a great receiver, but he pulled from his end spot and led up through the hole. Got a, just a superb block in there. You know, you know, well, perhaps we can see this on this play. Now Blackwell's on the left of your screen. He's going to turn around. He's the lead man. Now watch him pull through there. Now watch this block on right where he turns. Right back there. Bam. Boy, that's a block. That was on Eric Blunt that he blocked. Big draw. Vogler on the roll. He'll keep for maybe a yard. You know, Dave, one point about Blackwell's catches, and I know we've talked a lot about them, but I don't think two weeks ago, I don't think anybody would have given him a chance to break that record because of that injury to his wrist. Well, he did it in a remarkable third quarter for TCU. They pull even as we head to the fourth. what TCU can do into the wind in the fourth quarter. 80% of the points have come with it. Second and nine at the Cougar 14. And Vogler has Blackwell inside the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Tyrone Davis prevented the touchdown. Well, why not go to the surest hands on this football team, and that's Kelly Blackwell. It'll be first and goal for TCU. Again, he's, he just seems as if he just kind of just sneaks out there. Watch Vogler just kind of throw it out to him easy. Look how wide open he is. Then he's the big man to bring down. He carries it all the way down to the one-yard line. And again, TCU misses the snap count. Boy, that really hurts when you jump off sides down here. Now, a lot of times you really have to concentrate on that snap count. Because the defensive players are yelling out different signals and things like that. You can't mistake that for Dead your snap foul. count. False start on the offense. Replay first down. That was on Barrett Robbins, who is a backup. Foul. Offensive Foul. tackle. Third quarter stats. Still a fairly significant edge in total yards for Houston. But TCU, after trailing 35-21, threatening to take the lead in the first minute of the fourth quarter. 640 yards passing. First and oh. goal back at the six. Modkins up the middle. To the lip of the cup, and it'll be second down. Now that's the difference that TCU has over Houston is that they run a lot stronger. In here, they've got that little Motkins who can kind of sneak through there or bounce outside. He picks up good yardage here. 
Look at those eyes. See those eyes concentrating on where he's going. Gets a good handoff. Find those big linemen. Just get behind them. Put that head down. Squeeze that football. And he's down to the one-yard line. Quarterback sneak. Vogler touchdown. TCU back in front. Marsh the senior. That time Vogler just got down behind him and said, big boys, just clear me away. And he just drove into that end zone. Jeff Wilkinson adds the extra point. Well, again, just get behind those big linemen. See Morse there, 52, and Marsh, 62, just driving off that football. Frogs led early by 14, fell down by 14, and they score 21 unanswered points. Mark. Forty to 35. And we will now see what Houston can do with the win behind them. Kenny Perry from the 17th. They'll have pretty good field position from the 35, and whereas Klingler settled for the short stuff in the third quarter, you would expect him to start airing it out deep in the fourth. Well, watch out now. He's got that wind at his back, as you said, and he can go farther downfield with less fear of that ball holding up. So I would look for Klingler to go more. He's been throwing into the wind those five to seven, maybe nine yards passes. Now look for him to go downfield. Well, Colorado holds on. They had 30 below wind chill at Ames, Iowa today. The Buffaloes survive 17-14. Big short, looks deep, goes deep, too deep. And he had a wide open for Fred Gilbert. Well, that's more the way yeah. he looked when the game started. Well, yes, he took that quick flash action where he just does that little pump play fake. But that's one he'd love to have back because he was wide open down the seam. He just missed him on that play. And he drilled it. One of the best things he does is throw the deep ball with touch, but no touch on that one. No, that was a, that was a rocket right down the pipe. Anderson coming on a blitz. They pick him up. Now they surround Klingler. Got it off. And the catch at the 41-yard line as Tracy Good got blasted. And Klingler is again slow getting up. Boy, he got up. He looked like a punch fighter that just got knocked out. Looked like he staggered when he got up. Bothered with a, with a rib injury and having that flu. But he jumps right back in there and takes control of that huddle. Don't you have to really respect him? Like the Cowboys in the Western, that they keep firing with arrows sticking out all over. They have done a much better job this half controlling Teandre Sanders. Reggie Anderson, not only. Very active in terms of tackling, but getting the crowd involved this second half. I was just going to make the same point. Every time the play finishes up, Anderson is in there, smacking his teammates, popping them on the back, getting the crowd into the game. He's not only doing that duty of leading this team in tackles, but he is really an emotional leader out there now. They go for it on fourth and two at their own 44-yard line. And it is Sanders dragging Greg Evans all the way to the TCU 45. That's confidence in your offense. Boy, that is. And what a good read by Sanders on that play. He could have been stopped, but he's just with that good vision that you expect out of a good running back. He sees the seam and just squirts through it. Now, look, if he takes an inside move, see that little adjustment back outside? That's what made the play. If he doesn't make that adjustment, he runs smack into the defensive tackle. 
confidence in your offense and a lack of confidence in your punting game. Both on display for John Jenkins here. Short toss, Gilbert up the side, close for a first down. They mark him out at the 38. Anderson chased him out over there. Well, in that speed of Gilbert and that wide out, that cornerback's off seven, eight yards, and he just refuses to come up and to close on him for fear that the, the long bomb is going to come. Another quick toss. Oh. Incomplete. And it was intended for Ron Peters. First time they've thrown to Peters today. Well, they didn't even see Peters out there. There's a flag down on the play on this side, but Peters had almost as if he had snuck out there. There was no coverage whatsoever on him. If he's able to catch that football, he goes downfield for a touchdown. But the it would have been called back because the penalty is going to be against Houston. We have a legal motion on the offense. Penalties declined. Third down. Boy, they'll look at this on film and just absolutely cringe when they see how open he was. Or would have been. Oh. The corner had not even gone out there with him. The corner had, you see him at the top of the screen now, but on the last play, he wasn't even out past the numbers. Third down. And again, incomplete. This one for John Brown, the third. JB3, one of three JBs on this team. The other two are DBs. Boy, you got to catch that pass. That has got to be a completion. Well, they went with Sanders last time on fourth down. Not much question. They'll go for it on this fourth down. But a little bit different, Dave. It's over two yards. And they have Sanders at a slot. Quick toss. First down, Freddie Gilbert. If you're the Frogs, you go to the all-time tight end. If you're the Cougars, you go to the nation's leading pass catcher. And did you not think Freddie Gilbert knew exactly how far he had to get? He didn't try to juke. He put that head down and said, hey, I'm going to play fullback on this play. Watch out quickly. Now watch Gilbert. i got to get up to that strike. Put that shoulder down and just drive up there. Smart play by a veteran player. Alvin Jones on the tackle. 11 minutes to go. And dropped by Berlin Brown. And they're wearing gloves. Does that have an effect? Well, it does not it doesn't. The gloves are, are also made of leather, and they get hard. Now, they do have these rubberized gloves inside. But is it keeping their hands warm? Well, it's keeping their hands warm, but a lot of times the surface of the ball is slicker, and it when it meets that glove, it has a tendency just to kind of smack out. So you're warm, but you're slippery. That's right. protection finds the open man who drops the ball at the two daniel adams oh and what happened oh what happened he dropped it that's what happened i mean klingler does a little fake again and he has adams running right down the middle of the field watch him number two now watch you're not even going to see anybody even near him look at this there's nobody within 10 yards of him and he drops the football now one of the things he did wrong there tried to catch it against his body instead of reaching out with those hands and catching it away from his body Under pressure and almost intercepted by Evans. Evans was the man in the neighborhood of Adams on the previous play, whose footsteps Adams may have heard. Again, slow getting up Klingler, but he does get up. And it's fourth and ten. Well, that time Grant broke off his pattern. I don't know why Grant broke off, but he ran about a 10-yard pattern and just stopped. And that allowed Evans to recover back and help in the coverage. They tried a 61-yarder in the first half, and the first man ever to hit the 400-point mark will try a 50-yarder here. They're but one minute short. They better call timeout, and they do. <laughs> Jim Herndon was uh, the true freshman racing onto the field, but they still had to burn a timeout. Each team with two timeouts, that much time left in a barn burner in Fort Worth. 
has made his decision on fourth down and 10 with 1049 to play. Once upon a time they led this game 35 to 21. That was 21 TCU points ago. His decision still to go for the 50 yarder. Perry holding. Anderson kicking. Get left. And it is good. He sounded like a golfer. He said, get left. I know. I got I know. With this downfield, Mike's on the field. You can hear him say, get left. Get left on that kick. And sometimes the ball, answer. sometimes it listens to. <laughs> well, you think his godfather, Roman Gabriel's happy? Of course, his dad was a backup to uh, Roman Gabriel. So Houston, again with the win, back to work, and it's a four-point lead. You know, one thing about Anderson that's really been interesting is this season when they made the goalpost narrower, he started kicking at nine-foot wide goalposts. So it really hasn't affected him. Another Houston innovation. That's something that kickers around the country ought to pick up on. All the guys who've been bothered by this, they say, and they're correct, you know, the middle hasn't moved. If you still aim for the right. middle, you're okay. But... Statistically, a big drop in field goal accuracy this year. But not for Roman Anderson. He is steady as usual. He'll kick as Briskin Howard holds for him to either Houston or Moore. Got all of this one, Maury, for the touchback eight yards. Right. Now then, the TCU offense, which ran up and down the field almost at will in the third quarter. Come on, Matt, come on, Matt. What do they change strategically into the win? That's the question we'll see answered now. Well, one of the things they should do is use that same ball control. They've had a, a good success with that running game. They've been able to drive and control that football. They wanted Vogler to be very sure on his pass attempts, but burn up that clock. That's the way you keep Houston from scoring. They give the Motkins on first down, weaving his way to the 27. Exactly what they wanted. Seven-yard game. The Houston scoring drive. 12 plays and only 33 yards. Anderson officially 49 yards on the field goal. And that's four yards shy of the school record. Clock rolling at 10-13. Second and three. Modkins again. He got smacked hard. And then carried Nigel Ventress forward. Or maybe an extra yard or two. It'll be third and two. Last year, Houston 56-35. This year, total combined yards 684. It's about 500 fewer than they combined for last year. 12 scoring drives of less than 445 this year. 12 of less than a minute 40 last year. Quarterback sneak. I don't know if Vogler got it. Going to be real close. Boy, that was an interesting call. I think I would have given it back to Modkins again. Vogler stretched. I don't think he made the first down. He had, looks as if he had to make the 30-yard line, and the ball is short. Watch here. Just get that ball, get behind that center. But this time he comes up, I think, a little bit short. If he is, big decision by Jim Wacker. Does he go for it on fourth down? Evidently so. Oh, boy. Now watch Vogler try to draw him off sides with that voice inflection. Sneak again and no problem. First down, TCU. We are seeing some gutsy coaching. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, boy. It's the Jack Crow factor. Boy, it is. Go for it on fourth down. Now, this time what Vogler does is he steps outside. Had he tried to that quarterback sneak again, they had stuffed the center in that. But he steps outside. Watch. Step to the right, outside that guard, and find that seam. Crow going for it on fourth down at his own 19 for Arkansas against Texas, evidently starting a trend around this conference. It worked for him, and it's worked for both Jenkins and Wacker in their own territory in this second half. 
Pump fake, Vogler deep. And Shipley with the grab, did he hang on? No. Whoa. Oh. Did not see him drop it, and the back judge will wave off the catch by an enraged Shipley. Well, I think what Shipley was saying and what that judge thought he saw was that he came down with the football, the side referee, but the back judge called it incomplete. Shipley really hopping mad when he first saw that call made, and then he calms down. Let's see if the AstroTurf causes this to pop out. It Watch. looks like a tremendous catch. Look how high Shipley goes. Now he's got control of it, and the ball just comes out. He did not have control That's of it, good I should call. say. Good call. You've got to come down with control of that football. Awfully close. We just load up with six on the line. Out of the shotgun, but the whistle blows. And that might be delay of game. Well, see what he's saying, what Jim Wacker's saying? Wait a minute, the clock was off. It wasn't working. And TCU will call time. And evidently not suffer a five-yard markoff. We'll take time out. With that much time remaining. Another Peter Rolf <laughs> fan. They are everywhere. Be sure to join Raycom Saturday night, December 28th for Blockbuster Bowl 2 from Joe Robbie Stadium in sunny South Florida. The eighth-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide will take on the Big 8 runner-up Colorado, Oklahoma, or Nebraska in the Blockbuster Bowl Saturday night, December 28th on Raycom. Peter Rolf, by the way, our, our uh, boss, executive producer of Raycom. And a legend here in Fort Worth. 8.29 to play, option pitch. Modkins turns it up to the 38-yard line. It'll be third and three. Ventress on the tackle. Iowa's starting to open it up on Minnesota. Arkansas still shutting out the Owls. Washington State by one, second quarter. That would be a huge upset. That won't happen. <laughs> that will not happen. This is one. <laughs> That they cannot do. Incomplete. They went for Blackwell, who thought he was interfered with by Tyrell Davis. But a clean deflection, and it's fourth and four. And look at Blackwell walk over there and say, he was on my back. It was awfully close coverage. Let's see if we perhaps can see how close the coverage was. Watch when the ball is thrown. Now watch the coverage. No, he's not on him. He steps in front of him and doesn't put that back hand on. That's just an excellent play. He can again, very short kick, does get the roll. And Steve Harris on his knees at the 29-yard line. Those who have come to Eamon Carter Stadium have seen one of the better shows in college football this year. 746 still to go as we return after this from Southwest Airlines. You just get the idea TCU is going to have to get more than that 42 point total to come up with the W here. Flakely with the win behind him, 746 to work with, 70 yards away from another go ahead touchdown. And a whistle and flags. Rogers Redding will tell us what happened. Well, somebody had to move on offense. That's what happened. We have a dead ball foul. Illegal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's the center moving the ball. That's the center. Like taking a little hitch in his snap. So first and 15. Klingler could get over the 400-yard mark on this drive if he can still stand up. Moulton came, Bolden came, and Vincent Pryor helped out against Klingler, and again he pops up. 
I'm going to tell you, he has got to be one tough person. For him to take this pressure and to go down this number of times, he is just, boy, he is a super tough person back there, quarterback. That's nine TCU sacks today. And they're coming again. Shovel pass, Sanders. Spins off contact to the 35. And on second and 23, he gives him 18 of the 23 before Rand and Jones finally make the tackle. Boy, and when the coaches tell you to wrap them up, they mean wrap them up. And this is exactly what happens. They don't wrap them up. Look right there. You just keep your arms on them. That was, Rand, that was Evans that went down. And he could have stopped about a two-yard gain. Instead, he gets a big gain. East Carolina trailed in that one for a while. Still scoreless in Austin. Cleveland keeping battered again. Will not have the first. Now will Jenkins go for it again in his own territory on fourth down? Boy, I hate to think that's a design play when I've got Sanders back there finding those holes. Big decision here for John Jenkins. He's saying, hey, we're taking a page out of Jim Wacker's book and we're going to go for it too. Well, Wacker took one out of Jenkins' book. <laughs> he took one out of Crow's book. And on fourth and two, here they come. Maybe Klingler can pull him off sides. If it's Roosevelt Collins off sides, I can promise they're going to be upset. But he's going to take a time out to just to talk about it, make sure they have the right play. 5.52. Down to their final timeout. Stadium. Bungee jumping. I, I have no idea why anyone would want to do that, but they've been doing it all afternoon. And inside the stadium, after the Houston timeout, 5.52 to go, fourth and three. And here come Klingler and the Cougars. Well, if it's me, I give the ball to Sanders. I let him find that little hole. He fakes to Sanders, and Klingler will keep for the first down, chased out by Evans. As battered as he is. Wow, that was a heck of a fake. The fake to Sanders held just about everybody except Evans, the strong safety. He saw Klingler all the way, but couldn't come up to make the tackle. But what a fake, and what a call. I mean, we're talking about down in your own, inside your own 40-yard line. Fake to Sanders, now bring it up, and you'll see Evans. Come right into the picture, but he can't stop Klingler for getting that first down. Good toss off behind Tracy Good, and he was not pressured that time, but it should not come as a surprise if nine sacks had thrown him off. Four. Well, moments ago. <laughs> Some guys will do anything to stay warm. Look at this. You mean this is fun? Oh, man. Well, I personally do not plan to find out. No, no. But this is second and ten. Again, short. That was almost picked off by Collins, and it's there. Daniel Adams ramble fumble. And the Frogs say they have it. We have a flag down way back in the Cougar backfield. They unpile it, and they say Houston recovers. That flag was thrown so far back there, I'm wondering if it's not uh, roughing the quarterback. Now, on that play, Collins almost intercepted the ball. Then they make a huge play downfield. And it is roughing. TCU. See, the play happens so quickly in Klingler, the next thing I look up and Klingler is down on the ground. That was almost his 10th sack. And uh, almost disaster for Daniel Adams, who dropped a sure touchdown pass earlier. Boy, think of the magnitude of this play. You've got the football, you're TCU, you're going the other way. As it is, you've got to give up this penalty. Is, I mean, this is the biggest penalty of this football game. In a, oh, boy. Yeah, roughing the passer on the defense. Penalized half the distance to the goal. First down. You remember the other big penalty that produced the possible 14-point swing the offside in the first half on Collins. 
kept the drive alive for a Houston score. To the sideline, Berlin Brown. They could Tracy Good. Good out of bounds at the seven. Rand and Hickman over there with him. 5-17 to play. Baylor now knows who they will play in the Copper Bowl. It will be the Indiana Hoosiers. We showed you their victory over Purdue, and if Arkansas can hang on against Rice, they head for the Bowl and Weed Eater Independence Bowl. They've held Cobb to 89 yards so far. Into the end zone, almost a stretching grab for Marcus Grant. Well, Dave, I want to tell you, I have rarely do you see a quarterback that throws better on the run than Klingler. He just snaps that body, whether he's running left or right. It doesn't make a difference. He throws across his body, and he just drills it in there. That ball is about three inches from being caught, and he's running with the football and throwing it. Third and two for the first down. Inside the five-yard line, it will be first and goal as Grant brings it in in traffic. Well, that was close to a pick out there on the on the corner. You know the old basketball pick where you wipe off one guy. Watch this play right here. It's almost a pick. If 16 hits him, he hits him there. That's a pick. He doesn't. He comes inside of him and avoids him. And that's what doesn't allow the pick play, but close. They clock at five as they get the snap off. The give is to Keandre Sanders. Breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Houston back in front. Boy, that'll bring a smile to John Jenkins' face. And I haven't seen anybody bring down Sanders all day with one person. Alex Molina is the frog who had a chance to stop him for a loss. They had him in the backfield. Really at the point of attack, he is he is stuffed right at the point of attack. And he just bounces outside for that score. Anderson can give him the three-point lead. This is, of all the extra points we've seen, the most critical of the day, and it's perfect. Well, again, Dave, watch Sanders at the point of attack. It's supposed to go right off the guard. Now he gets in the pile there. You see Molina hit him. 99 is right there in front of him. Now he just doesn't get tackled. He just bounces outside. DeAndre Sanders brings Jenkins Cougars back. They're in front, but a lot of time left for Vogler. 38 to play. And after Roman Anderson's kick, CCU will hope for the best in terms of field position. Every yard so critical because of the win factor. Morey will take the touchback. He'll be 80 yards away. The Houston scoring drive, capped by the Sanders touchdown run, goes 10 plays and 70 yards. Boy, more capped by that roughing the passer, which gave Houston back the ball at the point of the fumble and gave them the 15 yards added on to that to take them down to the 10-yard line. Watkins is the setback. Over has gone all the way at quarterback, and on the draw play, Watkins leaving for about three. Linton Weatherspoon and Cadrez on the tackle. And a flag is down. That'll stop the clock at 4.32. Watkins today, 22 carries, 80. Five yards if this stand. We have offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. It won't. First and five. Monday night, December 30th on Raycom. It's the Freedom Bowl from Anaheim, California. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane, which handed Texas A&M its only defeat this year. We'll face either San Diego State or BYU. Make plans now to join us December 30th for the Freedom Bowl. 
Ogler just does get it off, and it was slightly behind Blackwell and incomplete. You know, when I saw that pre uh, promo about the Freedom Bowl, I thought of that San Diego State-BYU game. Over 1,200 yards passing. The game ended in a 52-52 to -52 tie. Detmer brought him from 28 back in the second half in that game, and Vogler, who has played with the sore hip all day, looks uh, like he might have... Again, re-injured it, but stays in. It, it, you got to get him out of there with a lot more than one hit in this game. Across the 30 is Modkins. First down, Frogs. As we roll near four minutes remaining. Well, the fans are thinking about a three-point tie. First of all, they don't know Jim Wacker. Secondly, they don't know the wind that we've got blowing here. I think they do know the wind, but <laughs> we've talked a lot about it. There it is. It'll be right in the kicker's face. You're talking about a, a wind that would lessen a kicker's distance by at least 15 yards. Michael Jackson in motion. Option pitch. Modkin. Flipped up. That's a huge tackle. And Ryan McCoy prevented maybe 10 more yards at least for Modkins. He had that kind of room over there. Only twice this season has a TCU quarterback finished a game he started and Vogler's 325 away from doing that. Last time a TCU quarterback made it through a season unscathed, Reuben Jones, 1983. Eight years. Plenty of time incomplete. Shipley pretty well covered by John W. Brown. Really a huge play right now for Vogler. It's going to be third down about nine. You can see him on the sideline getting ready to send in the play. Jim Wacker has a lot of influence on that. The coaches up in the booth here are signaling down also what type of play to run. You know who I go to. <laughs> We're looking right at that man, Blackwell, and he dropped it. If he brings it in, it's another first down. Well, I thought he got held when he made his break on the line. He doesn't get up complaining, but the ball was there. You ever wanted to catch one, this was it. But I thought he got held right there. See the backhand, that's Tyrone Davis. But that ball, that ball hit him right in the face mask. Went through his gloves. Again, watch this. That ball is very catchable, and boy, that's something you don't see much out of uh, Blackwell, to drop one right there. He's caught 10 already today. That's his first drop. Frogs go for it, fourth and nine. This might be the whole game for TCU. Catch for the first down by Stephen Shipley with a yard to spare, if that. Boy, I'll tell you what, the you have got to love the courage of these two coaches. Fourth down, that doesn't mean anything. That just means another opportunity to go for it. If they don't make this play, if Jim Wacker's team doesn't make this play, this is the ball game. Goes to a sure-handed receiver in Shipley. Great concentration again by Shipley to bring in that first down to keep this drive alive. And that might have been the sharpest pass that Vogler has thrown all day. Fake to Modkins. He'll go deep. And it'll be picked off by Kevin Batiste. The former Toronto Blue Jay outfielder handled that one like Kirby Puckett in center field. And now Jenkins with 224 to try to kill. I thought David Lewis got interfered with, but I think his feet just got tangled up. He's number 18 down the center. You see, he just kind of turns around and falls down. No interference on that play, and the ball just floats up there. That's one of the problems with going deep into the wind is the ball, if it's not a strike, if it's not that just that rope throw where you just throw with velocity, it has a real tendency to wobble up there, and you can make great... You can recover great distances as a secondary man. And Batiste, the 24-year-old freshman, has his third pickoff of the year. 
Sanders to the 25, clock at 218. TCU with only one more timeout. Boy, David, that's a big factor, only one timeout. If Houston can make one for one first down, and you know Klingler's looking down in the end zone at that 25 second clock, and he'll use just about every second he can. If they can make one first down, this ball game's history. He's got 13 on the snap clock. He can take the snap with about a minute 43 to go. Down to five. And he'll keep Reggie Anderson, will chase him out of bounds. Oh, now that's a mistake. What he needed to do was just fall down. If he was going to do that, you just fall down. You see John Jenkins say, David, don't run out of bounds. Don't stop the clock. We saw Butch had not do that to Texas against Tech. It almost cost Texas the game because he gave Tech the extra shots and they almost tied it. Well, you're talking about time that would be going off the clock now, and it's not. The clock is stopped at 140. That's like giving your opponent an extra timeout. Third and eight. Cougars need their 32. And that one incomplete. Intended for Adams. It'll be fourth and eight. And here comes the punting unit, and John Jenkins' heart is in his throat right now. It certainly is. I'll tell you, all he's saying right now, and he may be saying, listen, take this ball and run out of the back of the end zone. But make sure you get it off. Good snap. He does get it off. Hickman from the 30. A return of 10. Frogs get it with a minute 35 to go. Now, Dave, that's a lot of time for Matt Bogler. He's got great field position. He's going to be at his 40-yard line. He's got 134 left. If they catch it in bounds or one where he has to run downfield, he still has that one timeout to use. It's a very precious timeout. But, wow, what a, what a mistake by David Klingler to run out of bounds on that play. He could have taken another 25 to 30 seconds off the clock. <laughs> It'd be right at a minute left had he not done that. Vogler from the shotgun. Floater, Blackwell, got it! At the Houston 33. Wow, what a catch by Blackwell. Tyrone Davis is with him. Just man to man, he's like a blanket on him. Watch Blackwell. He runs with him. Now watch the concentration by Blackwell. Hi to get the football. The ball never bounces off his hands. He is just a, such a sure catcher of the ball. He is closing his career with a career performance. Vogler, pump fake. Nothing but green ahead of him, and he'll slide to the 25. It'll be second and short, and that hip can't feel real good after that. A minute four and counting. Look at him getting up limping. He knows he's got the hurry, though. Look at him. He's bent over. He's hurt. Let's to make sure Modkins has the play, and in turn, Alvarez gets it from Modkins. Too tall and almost brought in anyway by Shipley, and now Shipley may be shaken up or maybe just disappointed. Clock stopped at 39 seconds. Good concentration by Shipley that time. He almost brought that football in. They are very close to being in Wilkinson's field goal range. From this position, you're probably looking at about a, oh, about 35, 40 yard field goal. They need to get a, probably about an extra 10 yards really wouldn't hurt in this situation. But I don't know if they'd even think about it. I think they want the win after what the Going through today, coming from 14 down. They need two on third down. Flag is down as the catch at the 15 is made by Blackwell, and let's see if they wave it off. Well, I say no catch. No catch, and now check the flag. Wait a minute now. That ball, I thought that ball, ju Blackwell just about caught that ball. I know he dropped it, but what I think the call is is going to be defensive interference. From where that flag is thrown, it's way in the back. That almost always is some form of interference. Now, whether Blackwell pushed off 
or whether it's defensive interference, that's what that's the determination. Holding, which is an interference call. Let's look at number 30, Tyrone Davis. There's Blackwell. Watch him come off here. Now see if he doesn't hold right there. Blackwell just drops the ball. It's behind him a little bit. That might not have been the hold, but uh, that didn't really look like holding to me. That looked like a good contact. Holding might have been at another position. But again, first down. Now they've got it on the 15-yard line. They're assuredly in field goal position at least. Pump fake. Vogler wants it all for shifting. Yeah! is Bo Hicks. He's watching the flight of the ball. His head is cocked upward and not down to see Shipley run out of bounds. Clearly, Shipley should not have gotten the touchdown catch, but it's in the books. Where are you going, at, baby? Good thing. Where are you going? Where are you going, Matt? Good job, Matt. not over. There are 28 seconds still to play. But what a game. Mercy, what a game. <laughs> boy, oh boy, what a play. And what a disappointment for David Clinton. Although, you know what he's thinking right now? I got 28 seconds left. That's the type of competitor he is. You don't see him hanging his head. I mean, sure, he's upset. But I can tell you this, he's got 28 seconds left, and he'll make the most of those 28 seconds. And because of that 15-yard mark off and the extra point, they'll kick from midfield. Highest losing score, Arkansas scored 44 in their loss to Tech last year. Houston's got 45. And it may not be enough in this one. Well, we had 91 points scored in this game last year. We broke in that. Deacon hangs it up. This is an excellent kickoff. Perry from his three. To the 29-yard line with 23 seconds for Klingler to work with. All he needs is one good shot. He's down near the 28-yard line. Well, he has that one timeout, Dave, so that's got to help him a little bit. 
obviously he's got to go deep. Right now you call upon your offensive line. He's used that little roll, that little strong side roll uh, to get out of the pressure. He needs to do that. He needs to have his offensive line and get him a lot of time. Look for Grant going downfield long. They are 72 yards away. at midfield for Grant. 18 seconds left. Second down coming. Well, he had Grant. Grant was wide open. Watch Grant. 81. Let him turn inside here. He's wide open. There's nobody around him. Again, no pressure. Klingler Worth intercepted. Greg Evans. outset they're going to look back at 1991 in a few years and say how did we do this that summarizes today and the greg evans interception caps an amazing ball game nine seconds to go over to a knee and it is all over at amon carter say one play determined the football game because it was a marvelous offensive showing but that pass to Shipley boy that one there in the Houston eyes that one will burn for a long long time N91 with their most points scored in a conference game ever at Amon Carter Stadium. And David Klingler, a loser by four and a wild one. My name is Kelly Blackwell, who ends his career as the NCAA all-time tight end reception leader with 181. 11 today for 124 yards. And he's going to savor this one. 9 to 45. The Frogs finish 7 and 4. What a defensive struggle, huh? And what a play to Shipley, that one that was out of bounds. This is the play. Watch Shipley on the left of your screen. He's going to clearly step out of bounds by at least two feet. There, he's out of bounds. He comes back in to make the catch. He's down. They rule it a touchdown, and TCU wins. And the seniors who end their career today for TCU never forget how it ended. Oh, boy. How many times have you seen a court team use five quarterbacks and still have a winning season? For Dave Rowe, this is Dave Barnett. Be with us next Saturday at noon as the Texas Tech Red Raiders take on these same Houston Cougars. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom.